All right, it says I'm live. Am I actually live? I'll give it a few seconds, let some people get on here. This was uh, a, not a scheduled stream. I didn't announce it on social media at all. So uh, we'll see if anybody's online. Always somebody online. <clears throat> hey, there's Chunky Cats. What's going on, Chunky? Isaiah Appleseed. Crazy Fish Kid, the Fish Boy. 187, there's Steve Mosley. Can y'all hear me? I guess, I guess if you're talking to me in the chat box, you can hear me. All right. Got a bunch of people getting on here now. There's Donnie Puckett, he says yes. All right, we got some people popping in here. We say we try to catch us some carp today, y'all. I've been out here on the water I don't know, a couple hours now, I set up in one spot, didn't do worth a flip, moved on back in the creek and I saw some, and, uh, which is what I should have done to begin with. I should have looked for them before I set up. And uh, since I have set up here, I have hooked three, landed one. He's got me covered in mud here. I had mud all over my face here before I went live. So uh, there's some carp in this area and I thought, well, I ain't really in the mood to film a regular video. I some days you just don't feel it, you know? You're just not feeling it. So I thought, well, let's go live. My plans to go live tomorrow got canceled. Uh, my buddy, Martin Rocky, had something come up, so he's not gonna be able to go. We were gonna go live uh, from his boat tomorrow. So um, I thought, why not let's go live today? We'll see if anybody's online. So i tell you what I'm gonna do. Let me, uh, there. Now y'all can watch the rods. Let me see. Boy, we got a bunch of people commenting here. Hey, there's Sandra Hillary. What's up, Sandra? Florida Channel Catfishing, Tiffany McConkey, Randall Allen. Grant Perkins. Eddie Nails, Brian Waldo. There's my man, Stephen Roth. He's a, cl a club member. He said, just left the water doing some bass fishing. Bite is just not there today in the Nashville area. Hopefully you get on them next time, my friend. There's Roger Bolin, fishy boy. Hey, there's my man, Matt Holacek, 499. Says, yeah, buddy, great way to spend a lazy Sunday. Heck yeah, man. Glad to have you. There's Mike Barron. Chris Groff in the half. He's, he's still on the travel. He's a buddy of mine here in East Tennessee, cath lab nurse. He's on the grind, man. Got to get back home, Chris. Fishing's about to get good around here. There's Sandra, Florida Channel catfishing. Says roses are red, violets are blue. Justin is so good, he can catch carp too. <laughs> Don't jinx me just yet, Sandra. I've, like I said, I hooked three out here, landed one. But going live is always the kiss of death every time. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. There's TJ Davis with a five spot. He says, do you snail octopus hooks? It never looks right to me. Um, I've snailed the octopus circles, yeah. Just regular, regular hooks, uh, regular octopus hooks, I, I usually don't. Um, but any circle hook, I, I typically snail. There's David Horner. Oh, oh. Get over here, that got thumped now. That got thumped. Y'all, did you see that rod get thumped or am I imagining things? It sure seemed like it got thumped to me. Yeah, something's got that, something's got that bait. Something's got it. He's swimming with it, he's swimming with it. Let's jerk his jaw, there he goes. There he goes, oh man. Let me get him over these other rods and get him on the other side of the kayak, because he's went this way. Y'all, I'm gonna bust my tail. This mud bank is slick. That'll be one for the blooper reels if I get a mud bath out here. I like to watch them women do the mud wrestling, but I don't want to be in the mud myself. Heck yeah, man, that was quick. I cast, I refresh my baits and put on a little bit bigger hook. 
and carp fishermen keep telling me I need a smaller hook. I, I used number eight hooks. I think that's why I lost two out of the three that I hooked a little while ago. So I just put on some number four hooks, some fresh corn, using old sweet corn today. And it didn't take long and we got another one. Come on over here, carp. Let's dedicate this one to Sandra Hillary with the Florida Channel Catfishing Channel. Come here, carp. Come here, you just a little thing, but on my bass tackle here, my skipjack rods, they put up a good fight. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, since that last one splashed mud all over me before I went live, let's net this thing, why don't we? And we'll bring him up here on the bank, out of the mud, maybe. Let's find, what are we gonna find? Let's, let's put him right here on the kayak, maybe. All right, guys, let me get the camera there. That's a, I don't know, seven to, seven to 10 pounds there, probably, in that range. I'm terrible at guesstimating weights. I could care less about that kind of thing, but awesome. Let me do something with the camera here. See if I can get this hook out of him. Where is that hook cart? Where's, there it is. Give me a hook back now. There. All right, guys. Oh, 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 hey, 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 enough of that now, enough of that. Whew, he wanted to flop around there, didn't he? Well, I feel like camera got awful close. I don't know, I'm gonna have to fix that. All right, well, there he is, though. Something happened with the camera, I feel like. I feel like we went zoom. All right, Sandra, that first one's for you. Whew, all right. I missed some, uh, I'll get caught up on, on the chat box here in a minute, y'all. Let me, let me do some finagling here. Get us some more corn on and get another, get another rod out there. Just using two rods today. So I want to have as much bait in the water as possible. I am not chumming the area. I can see where they're at out there, but I cannot chum to them. I, some of them carp fishing guys, I've noticed use slingshots to get bait out. I don't have nothing like that. So all I can really do is take handfuls of corn and throw it out there. And I can't throw it far enough to reach where they're at, so I'm just casting out there to them. But the water's all tore up. There's a bunch of them out there feeding, rooting around, looking for stuff. So thus far, it hasn't mattered that I haven't been able to chum. Look at this. Y'all, I'm going to show you this mud bank I'm working with here. Look at that. These are high, for those of you that watch this whole stream, there's a high likelihood I'm busting my ass at some point. It is slick. It'd be worth it if we catch some fish on video though, won't it? Let me get out here and cast a little ways. Well, that didn't take long. That may be the fastest I've ever got a fish on a live stream. I saw that rod tip just pop. He didn't bolt with it. I just saw the, I just saw the rod tip go. Doo -doo. I'm watching my own rod tips out here today, y'all. Uh, y'all, the last bank fishing stream I did, we had a fish on, we didn't even know it. Okay, let me get back up here. We'll spin that around there. Let me scroll up. Man, I missed some comments. I missed some super chats too. Let's see. Okay, there's the other super chats. Uh, Corey Robinette, I'm using corn today. Sweet corn. 
used Illusion 73, just got his golly whopper rod. Heck yeah, man. Glad you bought it, man. I hope you catch some monsters on it. There's Brian Forrest and his horse named Toby. Leandro Gonzalez says, violets are violet, not blue. <laughs> He's got jokes. He's got the other kind of jokes. <laughs> Edward Rickman, no. I brought a couple catfish rods with me, but I've come so far back in this creek here I ain't even gonna bother putting them out because I where I'm casting my baits is maybe two feet deep. I'm gonna have a hell of a time getting my kayak out of here. Corey Hardy, a 10 spot says, good afternoon, glad to catch a live. I'm currently in Lenore visiting and thought I might do a little bank fishing in any good areas. Um, well, that's a good question right now. I, if I was you, Corey, I'd probably head up there to Farragut and the Concord area off North Shore. Uh, there's a lot of bank access up there. That'd probably do you, have a better chance up there than what you would in the Lenore City area right now. And it's a short drive, so I'd probably recommend you go up there getting them creeks or off the pier or something if you're stuck on the bank. Riptide Outdoors 999 says, hey Justin, bait has been really hard to come by lately. Seems like the shad, shiners, bluegill just disappeared. Can get some bluegill, but the cats seem to hate it. Any suggestions or alternatives? Yeah, I have the same problem with bluegill. I love fishing with it, but the cats don't. So <laughs> it's one of them things. Um, yeah, I don't know where you're at, man. Um, Skipjack bite's been really good around here lately. They've been really easy to get overall, but I don't know what else you have where you're at. So it's tough for me to kind of give you advice when I don't know uh, exactly what your other options are other than those, man. I appreciate the super chat. I wish I could give you more advice, but I really don't know uh, what other baits you have in your area. Brian Forrest is nothing like carping 101. That's all I can do is the 101, man. I can't do that advanced stuff. Them hairball rigs and all that. And I can't I can't do it. There's Mike Porter in the house. He's a club member for a long time. There's Benjamin Kemp. He says, hey Justin, good luck today. Out on Wheeler with some fresh skips. Fishing the bank today. Heck yeah, man. You're in a good spot to be fishing. There's Stephen Roth. So says, has anyone got experience with the Old Town Topwater 106? I have the option to get one at a great deal, but I'm looking to do some catfishing out of it. And I don't know if it's stable enough. I, I don't think, uh, I've not been in the 106, but I assume just from the hull design that it's really stable, Stephen. The, the issue you might run into with that 10 foot model is just speed. It's gonna be, uh, you know, significantly slower than their 120 model or the Big Water 132 and lack of storage space too. There's Catfish Bill 66 has joined the Catfish Club. Thank you so much, Bill. Glad to have you, man. Michael Strunk 199 says, do you ever catch any mirrored carp on occasion? Yes, I have caught a few. We've got them in here. Paul Boyd in the house. Catfish Bill says, love supporting awesome channels and longtime follower. Well, thank you so much, Bill. There's Riptide. He says he's considered buying frozen skipjack, but don't know if it's worth the shipping. 24 skipjack, 10 inch, whoo, for 89. Yeah, that's outrageous, man. I'd, I'd stick with the bluegill and just make it work. <laughs> I'm too cheap to be paying that much for skipjack. Andy Haynes says he loves carp fishing. He used to do pay lake fishing for them for money. Caught a 38 pounder. That's a big one, man. Mike Porter says good luck today. William Clarius makes his own dough bait. Yeah, I'm too lazy for that. I get them 50 cent cans of corn. Uh, Joshua Russell, they usually raise the water here late April, early May, typically. 
Justin Kenny, I believe the weight capacity on my kayak is 650, I think. There's Zachary Blanco in the house. Eddie Polly, Karen May, John Bale. Glad to have y'all, man. We got 262 people in here, which is awesome. I didn't announce this anywhere on social media. I uh, didn't say anything about it. My plan was to go live tomorrow morning with Martin Rocky from Deuces Wild Fishing Charters and uh, on his boat there, but he had something come up and he called me this afternoon and said he wasn't gonna be able to go. And so I thought, well, I'm out here today, you know, doing this carp fishing. I wasn't really in the mood to film a regular video anyway. I was like, well, hell, let's just go live. Let's just go live today. So we live doing some carp fishing with 270 something people watching. Manford Man says, does anyone know what brand of reels are on Justin's catfish rods? Currently, currently we got some Shimano Takotas on there. I was using dye with Seagates previously, and before that I had some Abu Garcia uh, Ambassadors. I've had Bass Pro Cat Max, Okuma Classics. I've used a, I've used a bunch of different reels. Jalen Culp says, are you gonna use any of the carp? If we get some really small ones, I will, but them, them size, like I caught air, Mendigo and, and up, I don't, they're, they're too much to, too much trouble to cut up. About need a chainsaw to get through them. Ingo Hurst has some good advice here. He says, some advice from an old German carp fisher, take some of the more stick mud you're standing on, mix it with the corn and you can throw it further. That's a smart idea. That is a dang good idea. Thanks for sharing that. I probably could throw this mud further. Ninja says, I live in the same area as you. All I want is to catch a fish, no matter size or species. Any idea where I should go? Well, you know, we're loaded with bluegill around here, so I'd get you some gulp minnows and hit the closest boat ramp to your house. That'll put you on some fish. Vance Wilms is watching with his boss again today. Heck yeah, man. He's getting paid to watch this crap. <laughs> Corey Hardy says, bread floats, works wonders. Yeah, I used to catch some on bread, on little bread balls, and I'd be bluegill fishing off the, off the dock sometimes. Jennifer Steele says, hey man, I'm a huge fan. I love when you make videos of deep hole fishing when it's about 90 feet deep. Yeah, I'm gonna get back down there to Nickajack at some point once the, once the flow slows down a little bit. The current's been ripping through there lately. A little too much for me to get out there in the kayak right now. A little Dewey's tuning in from Germany. We got two people from Germany in here tonight. He says, thanks for the entertainment. If I ain't fishing, I sure do enjoy watching some fishing. Well, thanks for tuning in, man. I don't even know what time it is over there in Germany. And David Simmons, we're using corn today. Philip Thomas says he's disabled now, not able to walk, but he loves fishing. And he says, you're a great person and fisherman sharing your video. Well, thank you, Philip. There's Dale Phillips in the house, Robbie Gilliam, 731 cat fishing. Charles Roberts, I've just got a, a Carolina rig on there, just a downsized Carolina rig with a number four hook. Penny and Kentucky's watching the race. I don't know how you can stay awake during that thing. My dad's probably watching right now too. He's sound asleep on that, on that racetrack or watching the, them cars go around the racetrack. Terry Peatfish from Des Moines, Iowa. Awesome. Got a bunch of people in here today. 281 people, man, that's awesome. I had no idea with it being Sunday afternoon and 
no announcement that I was going live. I had no idea what to expect. This is awesome. Rion du Plessis from South Africa. We got Germany and South Africa in the house. Jennifer Steele says, where did you learn to call your big fish golly whoppers? I don't know. You just pick up sayings going through the south here where I live. I got a bunch of sayings. <laughs> some of them suitable for YouTube and some of them ain't. <laughs> Roger Boland said, if you started a TV show of you fishing, I'd watch it. Well, you, you call them cable networks and tell them to sign me to a deal. <laughs> Mike, he's been watching the race too. He's been watching an F1 race. I think that's them old cars with the people's got their heads sticking out. Hey, there's Callie from North Dakota. 20 spots as I was waiting for a carp video on a quick break at work. Wish I was fishing. Well, yeah, Callie, I'm giving it a shot today. I was out here doing some carp fishing and just wasn't in the mood really to film a normal video. You know, you got to kind of be on for that kind of thing and uh, just wasn't feeling it. And on some carp here, noticed I had like four bars of cell service. I said, well, how far? Let's just go live. So we're going to go live here for an hour or two. I already got, for those of you just tuning in, we got to fish real quick into the stream. So we got one on the board already. Tony Keith, it's nice meeting you too, man. Thanks for coming by the booth at the conference there. Our Spider Skull HD. Jason Simmons says, carp fishing, what for? Because I damn well feel like it, Jason. I'll fish for whatever I please. <laughs> I ain't one of these one-dimensional YouTube fishermen. I do bass, I do ultralight fishing, crappie fishing, carp, catfish. I'm like some of these guys, I can I can catch more than a catfish. <laughs> Terry Pete fishes, are you chumming or just I'm just baiting a hook right now. Uh yeah. Couldn't reach where they were at to throw out handfuls of corn. I forgot the I was going to bring some cattle cubes and forgot them at the house. So uh, I'm just throwing them out there where they were at. I could see them tearing up the, the bottom out there. I'd hooked three, landed one before I went live, and then we got one since we went live here. So there's a few out there. Dakota Hutchins says there are many trout in Tennessee. There are up in the mountains, Smoky Mountains. A bunch of them up there. Greg L in the house. Dead sea pirates, especially at the mouses here. Yeah, if this carp fishing don't work out, we may head up there. <laughs> Terry Pete Fish is new to carp fishing, but cattle cubes. Yeah, that was a tip I got last year from Catching Dinosaurs YouTube channel and guide service. He, he uses cattle cubes, which are a type of cattle feed. They're like, a, uh, they got various things, seeds and molasses, and it's kind of like, like a treat for cattle. And he chums areas that he's gonna be carp fishing with those cattle cubes, and then uses corn to catch them with. And so I started using that last year and had some success. It's real cheap, it's like $12 for a 50 pound bag at the feed store. And so I was going to bring some with me and just totally forgot about it. I always forget something when I go carp fishing. Normally it's my net, but I did remember the net today. I went in my shed and got it and did not grab the cattle cubes. <laughs> Timothy Carey says, don't forget you're a shark fisherman now too. That's a, you're damn right. That's what I'm wishing I'm doing about every day anymore. I used to think about catfishing all the time. Now I think about going shark fishing all the time. That was so much fun down there. Crystal Riley in the house, Henry Christ.
Hey, there's Chris with hooks and hammocks. What's going on, Chris? Team reaction strike. No Jalen Culp. I've not seen any gar today. The water's a little, it's a little, there's enough wind. It kind of makes it hard to see. I can't even see the carp. I just saw the areas out there where they were rooting around. It was, it was muddy right there where they were at. And so that's how I knew they were there, but I can't really see individual fish. Eddie Polly, $4.99. Thank you, Eddie. He says, do you sell golly whopper combo or just the rods? We just have the rods. Um, you now, Catfish Sumo has a, a reel, a Catfish Sumo reel on their site that you could pair with it, but uh, he doesn't sell the uh, Shimano or Daiwa reels that I have on my rods normally. Thank you for that super chat though, man. Corey Hardy says, but we who watch regularly know how much he loves those channels. Yeah, y'all know I hate them damn channel cats, man. Them things are the devil. Penny says, are you sitting over a tree? I got one right there. I'm on a little clearing here on the bank. Water level's down several feet, so. I just pulled a kayak up on the shore over here. I'm standing here facing the rods right now. That way y'all can see these rods go down. Clint Payne says, what's up, buddy? You should have been in that wind yesterday. That wind's what kept me from fishing the tournament, Clint. There was two bass tournaments yesterday here in East Tennessee, y'all, and that wind was about 30 miles an hour. Hell, I didn't leave the house. Well, I went to see my parents yesterday, but I didn't go out and do no fishing yesterday. I wasn't going to fight it. Hey, there's Eric Romines. What's going on, Romines? Rob Chandler, no, I don't use any of them fancy hair rigs or bags or nothing like that. I'm, I'm corn on a hook. I'm a simple man. I'm a simple, I'm too, I'm way too simple for that. I just ain't passionate enough about carp to learn all them fancy, all their fancy gear and gadgets. Trevor Bond in the house. Jalen, we don't have any Asian carp where I'm at yet. They're out in West Tennessee. They're making their way up the Tennessee River. So they will eventually be here most likely, but thankfully we don't have them. We don't have them yet. Team reaction strike, what do he say? He says, how do I become a member? Right there was one splashing out there. Um, he says he clicks on the button, but it doesn't do anything. There should be a link down in the video description there um, that should take you to the, the membership tab there on, uh, on my channel. Should be listed up at the top too. Catfish Bandit said so his first fish on the Golly Whopper was a channel. You got nowhere to go but up from here then. <laughs> Caleb Worth says, how's the garden coming along this spring? I ain't even started on it yet, Caleb. I'm probably gonna wait till about mid to late April because last year I planted a little early thinking we was through the worst of the weather and I'll be damned if we didn't have a late frost and it zapped some of my plants. So I'm gonna wait a little later this year. Uh, Eddie, I, I mean, you can use whatever reel you like, man. Anything spinning or casting will work with those rods. But reels are kind of a personal preference thing. So it's tough for me to recommend any specific reel. There's a lot of good brands and models out there. Eric Romine says, someone from the BASS has been watching your channel. They've been referring to these big bass at Santee Cooper as golly whoppers. <laughs> That's funny. I'm gonna have to trademark that catchphrase. <laughs> Lonnie Broyle says, you at Watts Bar, I am. Old man on the hill, we got one so far. Well, good luck if you get out there today, Jason. 
call the feds on me. He says, do you do any pike fishing? We don't have them here where I fish at. If we did, I'd, I'd like to catch them though. Matt Jarvis. So he's enjoying the live scope videos. I'm glad you like them. Tim Zemke says lots of carp fishermen use bait casters, but he still uses spinning reels. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with the spinning reels too. I'm just using them on my on my skipjack rods right there. That's big enough. I'm not catching huge carp, you know. I'm when I go carp fishing, I'm in these creeks and stuff, and you know, it's a 10, 15 pound range is, is what I'm gonna get, which is fine on them spinning rods right there. If I was if I was, you know, trying to catch bigger 30, 40 pound carp, then I'd probably boost up my gear a little bit, but this is fine for what I do. Philip Thomas says, how often do you oil your reels? Never, Philip. I never do any maintenance. I, I use a reel till it starts sounding like crap and then I replace it. I'm too lazy to do maintenance. Hooks and Hammocks got some friends on Watts Bar right now. I had a guy come back here a little while ago throwing a cast net. There's Brentley from CatCon. Fishy boy, so you ever gonna go striper fishing again? Yeah, I probably will. Anthony D says, hey man, glad to finally run into you on Watts Bar a few nights ago. Wish I could have had a short conversation, but the rain had other plans. Oh yeah, 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 I met him. Yeah, I remember that. I was in a rush to get back to the ramp because I knew that rain was coming. I just barely got loaded up and got in the car before it started coming down. <laughs> I'm too much of a diva to be getting soaking wet out there. <laughs> Oh, my man, Dominic Hollis. He's been a member for six months now. Thank you so much, Dominic. He says he's fishing the Tennessee River at Kentucky Dam. I hope you're doing well out there, Dominic. He says, you're awesome. Well, thank you so much, man. I think you're pretty awesome. Met him up here at the Catfish Conference. Bird over there got him something. Oh, Osprey. Got him some shad. I seen some shad. Is that an osprey? Is that a bald eagle? I think that's an osprey. I seen some shad flipping, coming back through here. I'm a little concerned that we ain't had any more runs here. How long's it been since we caught that last one? Probably 20 minutes or so. Think about recasting them baits out there. I get impatient on this carp fishing, y'all. I get impatient. I gotta be catfishing. I can sit out there all day waiting on that bite. But with the carp, I guess because I'm not really good at it, I start thinking, well, maybe I, maybe I slung the corn off my hook on the cast. And, and most of the time I haven't, but sometimes I think that. And I want to reel everything in and check. And, Y'all feel free to talk me into or out of it. <laughs> Bearable Outdoors says, love the crappie videos. They were awesome. Well, thanks, man. He says, have you been watching old Elmo and Richard Gene? I, I watch some of his stuff. Yeah, I like his channel. He's, he's a very good fisherman. Hey, there's Nikki Hayes in the house. Hey there, Justin and everyone. I'm getting ready to take my son Aiden out for his 16th birthday. Y'all have fun. Well, y'all have fun, Nikki. I hope y'all have a good night. Sweet 16. I remember them days. Jacob Griffin says, love meeting you at CatCon. Thanks for signing my nephew's hat. He loves your show. Well, thanks for bringing him by there. Glad to meet you. Randy Patillo said, just watched the Selfish video from last year. That had to be a blast. Yeah, that's one of my all-time favorite catches. Randy, that's like top five all-time catches for me. Didn't have hardly anybody watch the video. It performed terribly. But I had an awesome time on that trip.
Mr. Catfish himself says, man, the thing I laughed the hardest was when you asked the guy in that boat, was he going to fish right there? Three guys on the lake and he was on top of you in the kayak. Yeah, that kind of thing unfortunately happens all the damn time. All the time. Especially if somebody's going by and, and they see you reeling in a fish, here they come. Ain't no courtesy in this world no more. Sometimes it depends on my mood. Most of the time I'll just, you know, if somebody gets on top of me, I'll just reel up and go somewhere else. Sometimes if I'm in the wrong kind of mood and it pisses me off, I say something about it. Especially if it's like a fishing guide or something. We got one fishing guide around here. It's I ain't got no courtesy for anybody. He did that to me last year. And I didn't want to give him no advertisement, but boy, I was real close to putting him on blast for it. <laughs> Roman Maroney says, what possessed you to go carp fishing? Because I damn well felt like it, Roman. I do what I want. <laughs> Dominic says, are you going to CatCon in Kansas City? Probably not. I think that's about 10, 12 hours for me. So I probably won't. If Catfish Sumo ends up going and getting a booth, I, I may venture out there, but it's a pretty good haul, so I don't know that I'll get out there unless, unless I got a place to land in a booth for a few days. I don't know if it's a one-day deal or a two-day deal. Tim says, if you're not getting bit, you know, see, Tim, I like the way you're thinking. He says I should check my bait, and, and I think I will. Dominic said he was going to go live, but you have everyone here. I ain't got the 300 people here. Don't let me stop you. I, I, it's probably a courtesy thing to not go live when somebody else in the community is, but hell, somebody's live 24 hours a day anymore. <laughs> yeah, let's reel, let's reel these things in one time and just check it. I'm, I'm just fearful I've thrown the corn off when we cast them out. It's been a solid, it's been at least 20 minutes since we got bit. Now that corn's still on there. Every last piece of it. I should have left it out there. I don't know why, I don't know why you talked me into that for, Tim. What'd you do that for? I'm gonna go ahead and check that other one too, just cause I'm, I can't help myself. I'm impatient. I don't bust my tail on this bank. Picked up some weeds on that line. Oh, that one's still got corn on it too. That still looks good too. I'm gonna slide on down the bank here, throw this one out. I'm inclined to believe these carp are probably working further on back as the day goes on. The water, it's warm out here today. It's like 60 something degrees today. And so I figure with it being a sunny day, the these shallows, I'm throwing out there a couple feet deep here. And so I figure the further you go on back in, in this creek, the warmer it's going to get. And when I come down through here, I seen the, the water was all tore up there for them carp where they were just rooting around. So they were probably making their way back. But we're going to, we're just going to put out baits right here for now. If we don't get bit. What I may do is just slide the kayak here off this shore and just kind of walk it down. We may end up fishing further on back in there. I got pretty good cell phone service here where I'm at. I got like four bars, so I think we can pretty much go anywhere we want to in here and be able to fish. Let me get back up here on the bank so we can, y'all can watch them rods. We in the shade now. The rods ain't showing up too good, are they? We'll make it work. Uh, 
let's see, Brian B catfishing in the house. What's going on, Brian? Hiking Mike's is try casting it in very shallow creek inlets for baby carp. That's when I always get the small ones is when I'm, when I'm throwing a cast net, when I'm actually fishing for carp. Hell, I rarely ever catch anything under five, seven pounds. Corey Hardy says, hey, there's my mom in the house. What's going on, mama? Corey says, a lot are trying TikTok live. There's always a catfisherman live on there. Yeah, I've been thinking about it. I got a pretty good, pretty big following there on TikTok. I don't understand how it works though with the, you know, when people give me super chats on here on YouTube, I, I know YouTube takes 30%, that's their cut. But on TikTok, people like give you coins or something or roses or hats or whatever. And I don't know what that turns into. I don't know what their cut is. I can't find any information on it, so. I don't understand it. Plus TikTok is just a cesspool. I turned my comments off a few months on there because I had kind of ignored the comments. I wasn't paying attention. And then, then I went back and I had like a couple videos that got a million views. And I went through the comments and I thought my YouTube comments were bad, but boy, the TikTok comments were just a damn septic tank. So I was like, you know, I ain't really monitoring this. Hell with them. We're gonna turn that crap off, so. I don't know if I can, I may have to readjust that if I went live on TikTok. There's Pontoon Jody, what's going on, Jody? Raymond B said he didn't talk you into it. You do what you want, remember? <laughs> that's, that's true, Raymond. That's true. I, I tip my hat to Raymond on that one. <laughs> Dale Phillips says, have you had any bites yet? Yeah, we got one pretty pretty quick into the stream. And before I went live, I got three bites and, and landed one out of the three. Spider Skull HD says, so then 35, size 35 reels are hard to find. Yeah. I know when I went to replace my other one there a year or two ago, I had a hard time finding them. Grant D says, question, why did you add more leader between your egg sinker and the hook for suspended rigs? Um, yeah, Grant, that's a great question. So I had played around with the knocker rig for a while, which is basically just a sinker, just right on top of your hook. And I had good success suspending with that and I really liked it, but I kept getting so many questions about it. So then I did a video, like a follow-up video after I'd used it for a while and answered those questions and I still kept getting questions about it. And I just got tired of answering them. So I was like, you know, I'll just go back to Carolina rig because nobody asks me anything about the Carolina rig. So someday when my YouTube days are over, I'll go back to the knocker rig when suspending baits. But as long as I'm on YouTube, I'll use Carolina rig. That way nobody questions it. Saves me time. I'm gonna reel in some of that slack there. Got some wind blowing through this creek and it's blowing a bow in the line. That last carp didn't, didn't really run with the bait much until we put the hook to the jaw, so. I'd like, to, I'd like to know when we're getting bit. Brian B says it turns into money, cash out after the live if you want. You must be talking about the TikTok stuff. There's Randy Shaw. Tim Zazinski says, put your PayPal link up and have people donate direct. Hell with the 30%. Yeah, well, I have it on there on the video description, Tim. But the thing about the Super Chats is it lights up a comment. So when we got a bunch of people in the chat box and people want to get their comments seen, it's, it's easier for me to, to spot it. 
but it is pretty outrageous that YouTube takes 30%. I totally agree. There's big bank catfish and striped bass, $5. Says, what's up, good people, man? Thanks for the super chat, buddy. Paul Boyd in the house. Grant D says uh, he digs the knocker. Yeah, I got some old videos. I think it was from 2016 or 17 when I was playing around with that. Works really good when you get hung up because your sinker's banging right on your hook versus with a Carolina rig, it's hitting all around your hook. So very helpful for that. And I didn't notice any real differences in as far as hookups went with the knocker rig versus Carolina rig. So I think it's a, I think it's a good thing to use. It's just, you know, it's not what everybody else does. So you just get pestered with questions nonstop. Johnny Stevenson, Wesley Good Fishing says, I enjoy your vids. Good job, Bubba, why carp? Carp are fun to catch. Your next PB on Cut Carp. Thank you for tuning in, buddy. There's Pontoon Jody. Five spots is because you're my favorite YouTuber. Just don't tell Chunky. <laughs> well, thank you, Jody. I think you got great taste in YouTubers. I want your secret safe with me. I won't tell Chunky nothing. <laughs> Daniel Pillow says, finally caught a live stream, man, been watching old live streams and videos forever. Well, thanks. Brian Miller says, bye, adios. Bob Livingston says, anything decent size yet? I, I'm terrible at judging sizes. That one and only carp we've got on the live stream was probably in the seven to 10 pound range probably. I'm getting impatient, y'all. We're going to be moving back in this creek here in just a little while if we don't get another one. I just feel like the later the day goes on, that sun beating down, I think they're just moving back. That's the educated guess I'm going to, we're going to go with. Has life. Sweet doggy. What's up? Yeah, Tim, if I was carp fishing more often, I probably would chum the area and then come back to it. I just don't do it frequently enough to, it's kind of a sporadic thing for me. There's Brokeback Bob in the house. What's going on, Bob? Apache Adventures. Catfish and whitetail. I'm using number four. I started out with number eight hooks and I lost two out of the three fish that I hooked before I went live. And so I said, hell with them number eight hooks. I'm going back to number four because I don't lose fish with them. And what do you know, the next one I hook up with on the live stream, we, we land it. <laughs> Mr. Catfish says he votes a move within five minutes. I'm up for that. Has, so he had his first kayak trip of the year on Friday. I don't know what the hell took him so long. He said it was the best, worst day of fishing. I got to watch his video. I seen it, I seen it there on the announcement about it, but I ain't got a chance to watch. There's Double A, Arn Anderson, 20 spot. Thank you so much, Double A. You're a good man. I don't care what they say. It really would be something if that, if that was double A Arn Anderson. You never know who's watching people. It could be somebody famous on there. Somebody famous could be tuning in at any time. I I seen uh, you know, on YouTube when you log into YouTube Studio where you upload your videos and stuff, it'll tell you like recent subscribers and you can see some of the bigger channels who subscribe to you. And, year or so back, uh, Cooter from the Dukes of Hazard had subscribed to me and I thought, oh, that ain't real. And I clicked on the channel and sure as the world, it was the legit Cooter from Dukes of Hazard. And I, I mean, I was just, 
I was freaking out because I mean, it's Cooter. And so I was calling everybody. I'm like, Cooter from Dukes of Hazard has subscribed to my channel. He watches my videos. How awesome is that? So you never know who's watching. It could be Kim Kardashian or Mariah Carey or uh, Uncle Jesse from Full House. I mean, it could be anybody tuned in right now. You never know. James says, braid and small hooks causes a lot of hook pulls. Yeah, you know, them carp fishermen, they, they've they educated me on them other videos I've posted where I was catching carp and, you know, tell them basically I'm doing everything wrong. And I'm like, well, I can't be doing too much shit wrong because I'm catching fish. But, uh, you know, the big thing that most of them had said was I need to downsize my hooks. But, you know, again, doing that, they're just pulling the, I'm just, I'm bending the hooks out or they're pulling free, so you know, we'll keep sticking with what works till it don't work. Bill Ward, here is your, your son shout out, Beckham and Barrett. Thank you all so much for watching Beckham and Barrett. Okay, good, has life set drops tomorrow. I must've seen his, his announcement about it there. I knew I seen something has. If it was a post or a video link, I knew I'd seen something about it. Daniel Pillow said, the wife busted in after hearing my name on the TV, made the whole day. That's awesome. <laughs> it ain't often I make a woman's day, Daniel, so I'm glad I could, glad I could do that for you. <laughs> Brian B says, I'm famous. I don't know about that. James Cardwell in the house. Johnny Stevens this is Arn Anderson versus Daniel Tosh. I'm I'm going double A all day on that man. Arn Anderson was the man. He was the enforcer. Them old four horsemen, buddy. Brandon Mraz. I hope I'm saying that right. 20 spots says thanks for taking us fishing. Well, thank you so much, Brandon. Thanks for coming along with me. That's so awesome of you, buddy. Thank you. Bill Ward said they have huge grins on their faces now. Thank you, Joe. Well, well, thank you for letting them watch, Bill. Old man on the hill says his, his nickname is Uncle Jesse. <laughs> Old John Stamos. I worked with a doctor back in my ER days one time. I believe I was in North Carolina. He looked just like Uncle Jesse, and people used to call him that, and he got so pissed off about it. We had to, we had to call him that behind his back. You couldn't say that to his face. We'd play jokes on the new people that started work and be like, he likes to be called Uncle Jesse, and boy, he, he'd get so pissed off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for a walk here, y'all. Come with me. Y'all, a couple of you can stay behind and watch them rods there. The rest of us, we're going on, a, we're going on an adventure. If I can... If I can get my butt up this hill, what I'm going to do, y'all, um, oh, now you can see me. How about that? I'm going to walk down here. I'm going to get up on this hill and try to walk and see with my glasses on and see if I can see some more areas on this creek that tore up uh, where them carp are feeding at. And if I can, we'll, we might reposition the kayak here. I got to find a way up this hill here first starting to get warm out here now. There's liable to be some ticks in the woods here too. I'm just gonna go on, a, let me turn this back around here. Yeah, we're gonna go on a little nature walk. Somebody's cut us a trail. But it's got some elevation up here. And with my glasses on, hopefully we can see some active carp rooting around in that mud. I hope a couple of you did stay behind to watch them rods over there though. That'll be the time a fish hits is when we're not paying attention. Happened in the last catfish live stream. Yeah, I don't really. There's enough ripple on the water. It kind of makes it hard to see with the angle of the sun. Let's walk on down just a little bit further. 
gets real shallow back in here, so I don't know how far we can get back. When the water's up, this area here's a few feet deep, but today, water's down several feet. They're finally getting us back down to normal pool, or normal winter pool. How many of the audience am I losing here while we go on a nature walk? Probably damn near everybody. Yeah, I can't really see with the sun and the that little wind ripple right now. I can't really see much. Hmm. Well, we'll see. We may stay where we're at just a little while here. And if the, uh, if the wind will quit blowing for just a minute, where I could see down in that water a little better again. That's how I'd spotted the other ones, is being able to see, but uh, the wind's blowing just enough to be a nuisance. Make it hard to see. I don't know who cut this road through here, but it's nice. It's a nice little walking trail. I could figure out how to get to this, I probably wouldn't even have to bring the kayak out. Now let's see if I can get back down this hill now. I don't see no rod bent over, so I don't guess we missed nothing while we were gone. I see something. I see something right out there. Is that fish or is that a stump of some kind? Yeah, I don't know why I'm pointing at y'all can't see on that camera. I can't zoom. Hmm. I don't see it moving. I think that might be a stump I'm seeing out there. Anyway, let me get back to the chat box. How many comments did I miss on our nature walk? I lost probably half a damn audience. Let me get down this hill, then I'm gonna get back to chat box. Okay, all right. We'll stay here a little while longer. We may just go ahead and move back in this creek a little ways, and uh, I would have liked to have seen you know, seen some water disturbance or, you know, just see them tailing or something. But I assume they would probably be moving back in this afternoon as it heats up. All right, let me get back to the comments here. There's Green Machine, Dan in the house. Uh, Anthony D. went to school with Tom Wopat's son. How awesome is that? I hope you at least got an autograph from him. Derek Stein says, any luck on the carp? We've got one on the live stream so far. Paul Ledford in the house. My first time in Tennessee, caught three golly whoppers this morning on Fort Loudon. 65, a 59, and a 52. That's a dang good day, Paul. That's some big fish. I find out where you was fishing at, I'm gonna go burn them spots to the ground. <laughs> Spider Skull HD has joined the club. Thank you, Spider Skull. Stephen Drake needs to move out of Illinois. It's still winter up there. I think we about done with winter here. You know, y'all, I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing with this ripple, but I swear right up there, there's a section right up there that looks like it's kind of muddy. Y'all be up for another nature walk. Let's go back up up this way. You know, I've walking back there. 
expecting these fish to be moving shallower. Maybe I might have sore lipped enough of them. Here, see if I can see anything. Yeah, if that dang wind went blowing. Over there on the far side, I know it looks like it's muddy over there, but there's a little point that comes out over there. Yeah, I just can't see with that little bit of ripple and the sun at the angle it is, I can't. I can't make it out. All right. Three hundred people watching me on a nature walk. What a world we live in, y'all. What a world we live in when I can go live on YouTube and scale these, these muddy hills and have 300 people watching me do it. And by God, I did, I scaled that thing right there. That's skill, folks. Walking on this mud bank. I ain't busted my tail one time. Talent, folks, you can't hide it. You can't hide it even on video, you can't hide it. Oh, right there was one. Right there was one right out there in front of us, splashing. All right. They still here in this general area. Wish I could cast just a little bit further over there. I'd never reach that one. Not with the size sinker I got on. Right there was another one. All right, we got some fish. That one here was a little bit closer in. There's some fish in this area still, y'all. I'm almost gonna be patient. We're just gonna we're gonna be patient. I'm gonna make myself. I'm gonna just do like I do catfishing, just put my time in. We had a new member pop up. We sure did. Darren Hickson, everybody, has joined the catfish club. Glad to have you, Darren. Thanks for joining. He joined while we was on a nature walk too. Travis Gentry in the house. I hope we get some carp to do some fist pumping with. We got one real quick into the stream and I'd got some, I'd got three bites before I went live. And you know, going live, it's usually the kiss of death. You, it, it's a jinx every time I do it. I'm still optimistic. James, so that's a lot of walking for someone that claims to be so lazy, yeah. Wasn't just walking, buddy, I was climbing too. I climbed that hill there behind me. Hog farmer wants to see Bigfoot. Well, we see Bigfoot out here, I'm gone. He better be able to run. Has is watching to see a blooper. Who liable to on this mud bank, buddy? It's liable to happen. <laughs> Valiant Ventures is gonna send you a handmade crankbait for a bass term. I don't hardly ever throw crankbaits. I appreciate the gesture though. I'd feel bad about taking it from you though, because I just don't, I throw crankbaits occasionally and I usually lose them when I do. There's Jeremy and Kim Langley says we're on the lake today, hoping you have a lot better luck. I hope so too, I hope y'all get on some. Well, here we got golf cart man over here. See, I need, he needs to bring a golf cart on this side of the, on this side of the creek. I could have used that when we went on our nature walk. I could have been carted around like John Daly at the PGA Tour. Or if John Daly's still alive. Boy, he was a spectacle, wasn't he? I don't even watch golf, but I'd watch John Daly. He needs his own reality show if he's still alive. We 
William Clarius says, what ounce weights are you throwing on that rig? He throws three quarter ounce to one. I ain't throwing that heavy. I think I got like quarter ounce or three eight or something like that. Whatever bass weights I had. I guess I need to get me some more, some bigger weights. I, ain't th I think the smallest catfish weight I got is a four ounce. So probably a little too big. Too big to be thrown on the skipjack rods for sure. Jordan Pratt says, yeah, he is still a drunk. <laughs> That's what made him funny. <laughs> Josh Wagner in the house, Papa and short stack stuck at work. Valiant Ventures says, how about a swim? I don't ever uh, go musky fishing either. We got them around here, but I, I, have, I don't have the patience for that. Throwing them big old musky baits and stuff. Hoping to get one or two bites a day. I ain't, I just can't do it. I've caught one muskie in my life. That's enough for me. Tiffany McConkey says Tennessee. Yeah, I guess they got beat last. I don't watch basketball. I can't get into it, but I guess, I guess they got beat last night. Black Magic Anglin of five spots is Justin. What's the longest blue cat you've ever caught? Oh, well, thank you for that. Um, that's Your guess is as good as mine. The longest one I've ever measured for a tournament was 50 inches. But I have caught some longer than that just in my normal fishing that just didn't go on a board. So um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Low 50s, that would be the would be the answer. I know we got some carp in this area, y'all. Hell, we seen two of them jump there a minute ago. I'm impatient. I wanna, I wanna reel some in. There's Tom Wascom from Indiana. Met Tom up there at the Catfish Conference. He has been watching for years. Long time viewers, finally nice to meet him. Got a son down here in my area. Tiffany McConkey said we lost to Michigan. You need to you need to quit doing that basketball stuff, Tiffany, and, and tell these carp to get out here and, and bite a hook. We got 328 people wanting to see it, Tiffany. Brandon Morales says, have you ever fished real foot lake? I have not, it is on the to-do list. I uh, wanted to get out there forever. Hopefully we'll, one of these years. I hear it's beautiful. Now there's some big bluegill in there. Master Nader 7, I've got some corn on. Alan Allison says, time to chum the water with corn. Yeah, I can't throw it out there very far. Still debating. I'm sitting here debating in my mind if we want to, if we want to move. I mean, we've saw them two carp just right in there just a few minutes ago. So they're obviously still kind of working this area here. I wish I could see down in the water to be able to, you know, spot them, figure out exactly where they're at. Spider skull says, need a corn shooter. I do, I need, to, I need one of them slingshot things. I've seen some of them carp fishermen on YouTube using the slingshots to get that corn out further. That German fellow there earlier said I should mix it with some mud here and sling it out, and that would probably work, but you know, I've got to hold this camera and all that. So I don't really want to be, you know, I'm too I'm too bougie to be getting getting muddy and whatnot.
James, son, Bob, no, I ain't got none of that fancy stuff, man. I'm a simple man. I use cattle cubes and corn. Tom says they make slingshots for shooting corn or bass fishermen. <laughs> Dang old bass fishermen. They out like mosquitoes in a in the summer right now with this warm weather we've had. They've been all over the lake. Tournament season started up around here. There's a daggone tournament about every day of the week. You'd think with five dollar a gallon gas it'd it'd ruin it for some of them. They'd stay off the water but not so much pure catfish hey daniel pillows join the club y'all thank you so much daniel i bet his wife approved of that she's a good woman thank you so much daniel Master Nader says there, he hear there's nice mirror carp in Del Hollow. Yeah, I've heard Del Hollow is like a, a big time carp lake. I fished there, well, I went out there on one trip. I fished there multiple days, but it was all in one trip for a bass tournament there. I think it, well, I can't remember when that was. 2020 maybe? I think it's 2020, 2019 maybe. Beautiful out there beautiful on Del Hollow because they don't have all it's not developed like it is here with houses everywhere you can get out there and just see countryside William Clarius a red solo cup and a broomstick yeah I ain't got neither one of them devices there with me either Dippy Rob says, if you move, pre-chum the area you intend to cast. Well, in theory, that's correct. But um, if we move, it's going to be an ordeal because I can't drop the motor down here. It's too shallow. So initially what I was thinking was I would walk the kayak back further in this creek because there's enough clearing here on the bank. Um, there's some people down there now. Now. I don't know if I want to be talking to you all with them right across the creek from me. I'm always weird talking around people. Um, but that was my thought. I would just walk the kayak down here on this side. I got a tree right around here. I don't know if I can walk out far enough not get my water down in my boots. Right there was one. They're, they're still right out here in front of us. I think they're just a little further away. They're a little further away than what I've casted. But no, when I go to leave here today, I gotta put the motor about just, I gotta be holding that cord and just barely have it in the water to get myself up to deep enough water to drop it down. Russell St. Pierre says, how much does your lithium battery discharge after a day on Spala? I charge it every other trip. Is Spaz Music says any golly whopper carp? Not yet. We got one small one. Tom says up a creek without a paddle. That feels like it. <laughs> I got a paddle in the front hatch, but I'd have to dig it out. That's for emergencies only. Pure catfish, four ninety nine. It says deeper pro castable fish finder. Would you use it? No, I wouldn't use it. Pure catfish. I only places I'd be interested in if I was bank fishing, you know, in one of these creeks or something. But I use my kayak to get to the bank spots, so I can see what the depth is before I ever pull up on the bank. So, wouldn't be something I'd be interested in. Thank you for that super chat, though. Stuart Coleman said so he can't watch this. Well, I didn't make you click on it, Stuart. Some people like live streams, some people don't. Spider Skull, so he's going to use the golly whopper for musky when the ice gets off the water. 
I hope you do, man. I hope you get a big muskie on the golly whopper. There's Keith Doc Reed, Catfish Club member. Says he's late, but he's here. Glad to have you, Keith. You ain't missed much. We got one carp pretty early on in the stream. Not a whole lot going on since. We've seen a couple splash here recently. They're just out of my casting distance, but they're still in the area. I think what I may do, all the carp that we've seen splash recently have been up in here. I may take this rod and cast it up here in this direction. Let's see if that, uh, maybe get it a little closer to them anyway. I picked up a bunch of weeds on that line. Oh, them weeds right there. That's probably what them carp are eating is all that grass. Yeah, still got all the corn on the hook. Let me make my way out in this water a little bit here. All right. I'm impatient, y'all. I'm too impatient. With catfish, I can sit out there all daggone day and not get bit. But if I'm doing anything else, any other style of fishing, and I'm not getting bit, I'm just fancy. Just don't have the patience for it. Joshua Howell, I'm on Watts Bar today in a backwater creek. Eric Arms, what's the biggest carp you think you've ever caught? I don't know. Probably not very big. I don't catch any big ones. I fish these shallow areas when I do go for them, so. I've bow fished and, and brought in some really big ones. But as far as catching them on rod and reel, I wouldn't even know. Russell St. Pierre says, is there any way we can send you pics of our fish catches? Uh, Facebook, uh, on my business page, you can post them there for now. I'm probably gonna be deleting that Facebook page here uh, soon. I don't really see a need. I, I, I've had that Facebook page for several years don't have hardly anybody follow me on it compared to TikTok and and uh, youtube so it's not really worthwhile for me to be posting on there i don't think i'll probably keep the instagram i've only got like 20 something thousand followers there on instagram but so i ain't got many people on there either but uh i'll probably keep it just for you know my own picture purposes and whatnot Keith Doc Reeds is liking all the new members. Yeah, man, we've been adding some members lately. It's been awesome. James Durham says, you're using a open bell nose as an under... I don't even know what the hell you're talking about, James. I don't know what he is saying. <clears throat> Eric Arms, I don't know if he's laughing at me or James. He probably don't know what the hell an open bell knows as underhanded is either. Ain't nobody knows what James is talking about. Josie the Texas Legend. That's a hell of a name because there's, there's been a lot of people in the state of Texas through the years. But ain't none of them been a legend like Josie. He's number one. Wyatt Smolowski. That's a mouthful. 
says, any luck? We got one early on in the stream. Terry York says, what are you fishing for today? As the name of the video would suggest, we are carp fishing. As it says in the video title, carp fishing. Spoiler alert, we're carp fishing. <laughs> I'm gonna lose something. I'm gonna get so many thumbs down on this. <laughs> I can't help myself. No, oh, here's James again, using an open bell rod, also known as an underhanded rod. I've never heard a spinning rod called that before, ever. Never in my life. I'm sheltered. Noah Cable says the algorithm is back. Not for me. My channel's bombed lately. I was posting videos about every day. I'm scaling that back until I, until the algorithm flips for me. Right now, I'm still about uh, more percentage of subscribers watching than non-subscribes, so I'm gonna go back to probably every other day, every third day. Kevin Powell drills is live stream for panfish plays. We can do that. I've done it before. We had some autofocus problems with my phone, but we can do it. Edward Rickman, no. I've got a couple catfish rods with me, but I didn't end up throwing them out because I ended up coming back so far into this creek where it's so shallow. If there's a big catfish in here, we're going to see its back. So... No, James, I'm telling you the truth. Well, I've never heard it called that before. That must be one of them Iowa sayings. I heard you all people up there in Iowa it was a little different. Uh, I know Denny Ransom. He lives up there from the, uh, what's the, I don't even know his damn channel name. He don't post to YouTube anymore. Float Fish Adventure, I think it is. Yeah, Float Fish Adventure. I used to call him Floating Turd Adventure. But uh, I know he's a little different. He's from Iowa too. Oh, I'm impatient. I want to catch a damn carp. I don't know what it's going to take to get one. Yeah, Tiffany ain't heard it called that. Wyatt hasn't. You own an island up there in Iowa, James. Ain't nobody knows what the hell you're talking about. I see Eric Arms, he's, he's closer to you. He's up there in Ohio, and he ain't never heard it either. You know what's happened to James, y'all? I'll tell you what's happened to James. Somebody lied to him. You know, one of his buddies like, oh, spinning, ain't nobody calls it a spinning rod. You know, everybody up here calls it open nose bail or whatever. And James just rolled with it. He thought his friend was telling him the truth, and they've been yanking James's leg his whole life, and he just, he just now learned that he's the only person that calls it that. Smoky Mountain Cat King's in the house. I'm in a creek on Watts Bar today. Randy Shaw, we got some corn on there. Old sweet corn. We got this old Ingalls brand Libby's whole kernel corn there. We about to, I think we about to move here, y'all. I know we've seen carp splashing right out there, but I'm impatient. I'm impatient. I kind of want to move just a little bit further down on the bank. Whoever was on the bank over there, uh, they've, I guess they went inside. So we wouldn't be talking right there in front of them.
T. Clift. He says he's heard them called open-faced his whole life. Y2 James T. Trucking through Arkansas, man. You be safe out there, buddy. Be careful today. I think we want to move, y'all. Let's move. I'm impatient. I mean, we got 313 people right now. We'll see how many I got. I bet y'all have 150 left by the time I get moved to a different place. I'm just going to reel in. We're just going to walk. We're going to walk the kayak right down here and get back in the sun. At least have our baits cast in the sun. The, the sun, the position of it here, this was, this was sunny when I got out here. Now it's kind of shaded and we ain't catching nothing, so. I just think that water... I bet you it's heated up several degrees today, as warm as it is, and with this dark red clay mud bottom down in here. I'm inclined to believe that these fish have probably worked back, even though we've seen some splashing. We may, we may not catch another fish back here, but it wouldn't be the first time I've made a move and it didn't pay off. Come with me. Oh. float the kayak out here. All right, let's take a walk. We're going on another nature walk, everybody. Come along with me. Come along, everyone. We're going on a nature walk. I'm going to go around the stump here. That's a nice stump. I bet there's a fish under that when the water's up. On the move again. Yeah, we're just gonna go right down here on this little beach looking area. I believe I got some water down in my boots, y'all. I stepped in that mud back there and I sunk down a little too far. What was it, 313 people? I bet you, I bet you we're already down to about 180 as I make my way back. But by God, the 150 of you that are left, we're all gonna be bored together when we get where we're going. Move the kayak, pull the back end up. Okay. Boy, this mud here, man, my foot's sticking in it. That's something else right there. All right. See what we can do now. There's one of them out. Goodness gracious, man. I tell you, you step down in this. Look at it right there, y'all. You step down in that, it don't want to give you foot back. This is a different kind of mud down here, man. All right, we're fishing again. I can get my legs moving. This is like quicksand, man. have a hard time with this. That's bad news right there, man. I ain't gonna be running to no rods, I'll tell you that. All right. Oh! Boy, I about done it then. Well, we still got 310 people watching. That surprised the hell out of me. 
I thought we'd be down to about 150. Y'all, y'all like going on nature walks on a Sunday afternoon. Don't say you don't. I heard another one splashing up there somewhere. I heard it, I didn't see it. Let me scroll up here. I had some comments too. Smoky Mountain Cat King says he's thinking about hitting up the Emery. He says a skipjack are thick at Fort Loudon Tailwaters. Yeah, I've got a report that they were in there pretty good. They've moved up early this year. And normally they don't start showing up at the dam till around April. So I was surprised to hear people were doing so good down there. Look at that, right there where we left, there was another one splashing. Right over there where we was at a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, Stuart Coleman, this is a good camera. He felt like he cast it. I wish you had a, it's dangerous, man, this is, I get to, once I put my feet down, I can't hardly get them back up. This mud here is the real deal. We'll see, we'll give this, this is as far back as I'm gonna go in this creek, cause any, any further back here, it's just, yeah, I mean, it looks like it goes a long ways back in there, but it's, I mean, you're talking inches, inches deep. But out in here where I've casted the old creek channel that was here, I'm kind of in that general area. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. We'll either catch something or we won't. Ryan Bronco, so he won't see me following the mud. It's liable to happen. It is definitely liable to happen. that wind again. If that wind wasn't blowing, we'd be able to see where these carp are at exactly in the creek. But I can't see with that ripple in the water, I can't see the where they've tore up the mud bottom. <clears throat> Daniel 45 Fishing says, what's the water temps? I It was like 55 a couple hours ago on the graph coming back in here, so. And that was up there toward that part of the creek as I was coming in. So I'd say it's probably 57, 58 back in here, maybe more. It's in the mid 60s out here today. It's a nice day, it's comfortable. I wanted to do some carp fishing today because with it being a Sunday and a beautiful day here, I knew the bass fishermen would be out everywhere today. And I'm just, I'm not, I'm not at a point to be dealing with them again. So I thought I'll just let them have it today. I'll come back here in these creeks. We'll do a little carp fishing. And uh, then tomorrow when they go back to work to pay for all the gas they've spent this weekend, I'll get back after the cats. So I got to go out in the morning and try to get me some bait. And then I'm probably going to fish for cats in the afternoon tomorrow. Edward Rickman, $3. Thank you, Edward. And there is Becca Mud Tramp giving me all ones because I'm number one, $111.11 because Becca's freaking awesome. She says, I like the mud, <laughs> but it's probably obvious. Sorry, Mr. Justin, just been trying to get this move from Texas to Arkansas done. I'm down to the wire. After I get moved though, y'all will probably be tired of seeing me so much. Hope everybody has a blessed day. Well, thank you so much, Becca. Glad you could stop in there. I hope your move goes well. That's a, that's a big move going from Texas to Arkansas. I don't know if I'd give up Texas if I was down there. You ain't got no state income tax in Texas. I think you do in Arkansas. I could be wrong about that. But thank you for the super chat there, Becca. 
Edward Rickman said he's going to be getting a few golly whoppers. I hope you do, man. I hope you like them. Best rod I've ever used. Joshua House is what tackle are you using today? I've got my skipjack rods. Those are Abu Garcia Veritas, uh, six and a half foot medium heavy. We got a Daiwa, I believe those are Daiwa Regal LT reels, 20 pound braid and 15 pound fluorocarbon leaders. Telling y'all, every time I go to move, like my foot, I mean, you just sink down in this mud. I mean, it's like, you're down, I'm down there past the top of my boats. If a carp tried to lay on bottom here, he'd get stuck in that mud. He wouldn't get free. He'd, he'd die down there in that mud. There's Hoosier, Hoosier Yak Cats. Glad to have you, buddy. Mike, lie big. That's right, man. If you're going to lie, don't lie small, lie big. That's the way to do it. Josie, the Texas legend, says, why don't you use carp for flatheads? I, I mean, I, the, all the carp I catch are five to seven pounds. I couldn't keep them where I wanted to. I'd have to be, that'd be the only bait I used. They'd be swimming into everything. I rarely ever get small ones. If I do, it's when I'm cast net and shad. Sometimes I'll get little suckers and stuff, and I do use them. I've had good success with them, both blues and flatheads, on the suckers, and red horse suckers. Becca says she pays a lot more taxes in Texas, even though Arkansas has a state tax. That's surprising. They must have a high sales tax or something down there. Adam Milburn from Cornwall, England. So we've had Germany, South Africa, and now England in here today. We got, we got people from all over the world. We got, we got another fella down here on the creek bank. We got these people, I don't know what the hell they doing. Probably come down here and get a better look at the show. There's Jared O. Dan, Nathaniel Bentz is, Come take on the Susquehanna. I might make it up there someday. My bass fishing friends have been up there. Caught some smallmouth. Oh, Becca says property tax. Yeah, I didn't think about property taxes. Now, we're pretty fortunate here where I live. Uh, we don't have a real high property tax. I got some power lines on my property, so I, get, I actually get 20% discount on my property tax since they cut across my land. I got all kinds of rules and restrictions and stuff about what kind of fence I can have and what size gates and you know this, that, and the other, but uh, worth it for the property tax discount. Tiffany says she's seen Peru a few minutes ago. You know, I used to work with a girl and uh, she ended up moving to Peru I think she lives down there permanently now. She loved it down there. I don't even know where the hell Peru is at. I think it's somewhere in South America. Once you get below Texas, it's all the same to me. Jeremy Wilhite got the skunk today. It happens to the best of us, man. Mountain Men Outdoors is going to Boone Lake Striper Fishing tomorrow. Good luck, man. There's Andy Winninger, Catfish Club member for a long time. Glad to have you in here today, Andy. Ryan Bronco, he's laughing his ass off on the Peru comment. I've probably offended somebody. I worked with a girl one time too. Where was she from? I'm trying to remember where she was from. It wasn't it wasn't Mexico. But it was somewhere down there in Mexico. Panama. She was from Panama. 
And, uh, boy, she didn't like it if you referred to her as a Mexican. I mean, I mean, she was, like, legit about it. I guess it was considered offensive. I guess people from Panama don't like people from Mexico. I don't know what their whole beef. They may have had a war or something back in the day, but, uh, yeah. You can't just assume people from Panama and Peru are from Mexico. You can't do that. A little life lesson there for y'all. Josh, how he's in Peru, Indiana. That's a different Peru. He's a Peru country somewhere. It's not in Mexico, apparently. Brady Parrish just got in. You ain't miss much, buddy. We've been live here an hour and a half or so. Got one carp right away. And not hardly nothing since. Just seen a couple splashing. Raymond B says, all those countries south of the border look alike. Yeah, I mean, I'm just so not cultured. I, I rarely make it out of Tennessee, so I couldn't, I can't even pronounce half these countries around the world, let alone know where they at. We're about to block somebody here on their, on their webcams. Yeah, we got them blocked. They won't be back. Y'all, once you get your your porno webcams there, click on that link. Yeah, Art Vance, I went down there to Puerto Rico a few years ago. And, uh, well, you talk about people that don't like white people, man. Them Puerto Ricans, they did not really, they didn't seem to like us down there. We couldn't hardly get good service. It was definitely a different culture. Tarpon fishing was great down there in Puerto Rico though. Ted says, how's the rod selling business going? It's been going good, man. We've had a, we've had a lot of sales. We've had a lot of good feedback from them. It really took me by surprise at, at how well they've done. I've been real impressed with it. Shane Hatley says, you doing another slot tournament next month? Probably, yeah. I probably will, if some people get in it. Greg Burgess from Huma? Huma? Halma. I don't know how the hell to say it, but he's from Louisiana. I'm glad to have you, buddy. Well, Becca's going to be close to some big flatheads. I hope she catches them up there, too. Keith Doc Reed, he's got a pair of golly whoppers. I got a pair of them in the kayak with me here today, but I ain't, I ain't cast them out. There's one Miguel back. Long time no see one. Y'all, I think we may have made a mistake by moving further back in this creek. What do you think? I don't know how long we've been back here. Josh Howell, uh, catfishsumo.com is where you get the golly whopper rod at. You can use the code kayak, get you 10% off your order and free shipping. Unless you're a catfish club member, then you get 15%. I'm a little disappointed with today's stream here, y'all. I ain't gonna lie, cause you know, before I went live, I'd got three bites, landed one of them. And then right after we went live, we got bit, I don't know, the first 10 minutes or so. And then nothing since then. I don't know where they've went. We had a good thing going. ride it out here a little while longer. What time is it? 5.58. I'm going to stay. I'm going to fish till about 6.30. So I'm going to give about another 30 minutes. Braham Dark says, what time is it there? It is uh, 5.59 Eastern time. 5.59 p.m. 
we've had the time change here, so it stays daylight till seven something now. Eric Arms, he loves my commentary. He must not be from Peru or Panama. Them people don't like me. Puerto Ricans don't like me because I'm white. I'm a gringo. Stuart Coleman says it's him. Well, I'm glad you took the blame for it, Stuart. I need to blame somebody. It ain't my lack of carp skills, that's for sure. We all know I'm a world-renowned carp fisherman. Can't be, can't possibly be my fault. We got these kids over here. Got these kids over here walking a bank. You know I don't like talking around people. They probably think I'm over here talking to myself. They don't seem to be too concerned about it. It's a good idea in life when you see somebody talking to themselves. It's, it's a good idea to keep walking. They're probably a schizo. They're off their meds. And you know, they're talking, they're hearing them voices in their head and whatnot and you know, it may not just be in their head. I mean, they could legit be like talking to some spirit next to them or something. So when I see somebody, I'll go, you know, out on the street somewhere and somebody's, you know, talking to themselves. I, I don't make eye contact, but that's me. Not everybody's like me though. That old fella up there on the bank here, he crappie fishing. That kid there, he's got, he found him a stick he's gonna use as a baseball bat. You know, I was a kid, I built forts out in the woods and stuff. I'd play with GI Joes in the creek and these kids today, they don't hardly get outside. I bet you them kids over there, I bet their parents made them go outside. That's probably the only reason they out here. Wyatt says, is it bad if I talk to my dogs all day? Dog's the only thing worth talking to. I talk to my dog all the time back in his life. James Trivet says, I need a fish going all physiological on us. I think he means psychological. Physiological is more uh, muscular. Eric Arm says, if you were to get a deal for a TV show, would you take it? I mean, if the price is right. Everybody's got a price, I know I do. I don't think they'd pay me enough. I think most of these guys that get TV shows on like the outdoor channels and stuff, I don't think they get paid very much. I think it's mostly just an exposure type thing. I think it's a very small amount uh, that they get paid and then they just, you know, they get endorsements and things like that, sponsorships from the companies that sponsor the show. But um, if you, in my opinion, at least, you know, from, what I, I could be completely wrong on that, but from what I've gathered, if you've got a big enough following that you could justify getting a TV show, unless it's a big network, you're better off just doing YouTube. Old man on the hill says when he hears someone talking to themselves, he assumes they have earbuds in. That's a false assumption right there, buddy. I worked ER and psych for a long time. There's people out there talking to themselves all over. There's a lot of schizos, a lot of mental health problems in this world. You know, it always got me though, you know, working in psych and the ER and stuff. As these people come in, you know, the voices are telling them to, to do things, to hurt themselves, to hurt other people. You know, the government's after them, God's after them, the devil's after them, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it always amazed me that these people always listened 
to those voices and would do what the voice is telling. But you know, I got a voice. Now, they wouldn't ever do a damn thing I told them to do. But they'd do what them voices, them people they couldn't see, they'd do, they'd follow their commands. Never made no sense to me. Lee Mower says it's great to catch you on a live. Not really today, Lee. I ain't got but one carp out here, man. We not burning it up out here today. Joshua, how? No, I don't ever do no hunting. Never got into it. I had high hopes, y'all. When we first got that carp right away, and of course I got them other bites right before I went live, I was like, man, we're going to have a, we're going to have an active day on this live stream, but it has just not panned out thus far. There's carp in here, that's for sure. We've seen them splashing. I think as the as the spring rolls on and we get more warmer days, we're gonna have a, a lot more of them up in here. I can't remember last year when I did those other carp videos when they were spawning. I can't remember when that was, if that was April or May. But the creeks, all the creeks were loaded with them then. You could just see them you know, chasing each other and whatnot. My mom says, I definitely need to catch a fish. <laughs> yeah. Josie, the Texas legend, says, do you ever chum with sweet corn? Yeah, usually. I usually do that, and I started using the range cubes last year too, but I forgot them at the house. And and today, you know, where I've been casting my baits out here, I can't I can't throw that corn far enough to to chum. So it is nice to know I got some cell phone reception in this particular creek. I'll definitely, I'll hit this spot again at some point. James Trivet said, any big plans for the garden this year? No, not really, more of the same. I'll do more of the same with it. I probably won't put out as big a garden this year just because of my time constraints. I've really got to do the YouTube thing hard this year, April, May, June, when my peak view times. And so that's kind of, that's when I'll be planting, you know? So I'm not gonna have a real big garden, but I am gonna put out some stuff. I didn't start any seeds. I'm gonna just get my plants at the flea market this year. Art Vance says, it's been a good day. Got to listen to you and when we heard from Becca. Yeah, Becca's the more exciting conversation than me, that's for sure. All I've talked about is nut jobs and nature walks today. I wish I could sell y'all some bidets, but I can't get them to give me an affiliate link. You wouldn't believe y'all. I, I got on there to that tushy, cause I got that tushy there for uh, 2.0 for Christmas. And I love it, it's the best thing ever. And so I got on their website and they got an affiliate program. And I'm like, hell yeah, I'll sell me some bidets. I'll make a little coin on the side. And the application, someday, someday if you're bored y'all, get on the tushy site and check out their application that you gotta fill out to, to do the affiliate program. I mean, it's some stupid ass questions on there. I mean, it's, it's, it's time consuming. So uh, hopefully someday I'll have an affiliate link and I can sell some pressure washers for your buttholes and make some real money. Uh, Sandra, we got one so far, the one we dedicated to you. That was it. Fishy Boy said, have you ever gone to purposely fish for gar anytime soon? Probably not. Uh, we got long nose and spotted gar around here, but I don't ever target them specifically. Dr. Dink, what a name. I catch a lot of dinks, but not, not your kind of dink, Dr. Dink. Uh, he says, watching you has made me decide to get a kayak. I'm sorry, I've cost him some money, but I hope you enjoy it. 
Keegan Reed, we got some sweet corn out. Old man on the hill knew I was gonna be talking about them bidets. I can't not talk about them. They're life changing. There's Sandra with a 10 spot, since here comes another carp. I hope you're right, Sandra. We need us another one. I've been needing another one. James Trevette says you have to fish hard just for gas, man. That's the truth, man. Gas keeps going up. Hurting them bass boaters more than it hurts me. I get 30 miles a gallon in my car towing the kayak, so. I'm fortunate where I live, I got three different bodies of water all within a reasonable driving range for me. So I've got options fairly close to the house. Old man on the hill, he's got two of them. I don't blame you. If I, if I ever had anybody over to my house, you know, like guests and stuff, I, I'd have one for the, for the spare bathroom too, the guest bathroom. I got one for my dad for his birthday. They love it, my parents love it. I don't know anybody that uses a bidet that don't like them. I don't know why here in America people are still wiping their ass. Makes no sense. I feel like I'm so much more cultured every time I use the bidet. Because them Europeans, you know, and, and people in Japan, they all use bidets. But here in America, I think it's just probably the toilet paper industry. We've been, you know, we've been trained to use toilet paper here because, uh, you know, Procter & Gamble, it's big business. I mean, hell, when the pandemic started, you couldn't find toilet paper. Now I don't even hardly need it. Charles Barker says, high gas prices equal less boaters. That was what I thought. But, boy, if you'd seen the number of boats at the boat ramp I launched at today, you wouldn't think we had a $4 a gallon gas. Stuart Coleman says, costing people cash is your thing. I want a golly whopper pole. Yeah, they available there, man. You ought to get you, you, ought to get you a whole setup. Don't stop at just one. Spider Skull HD says, do you hook them up to water? If you're talking about a bidet, yeah. You, uh, it's real simple, it takes less than 10 minutes to hook up, but you just, the water line that goes to your, um, your toilet, the bidet has like a, a split thing on there. Um, so you plug the water line coming up from your floor into it, and then it plugs into the toilet, and that's it. Uh, that's all it takes. This, other than that, just putting it under your seat and you're good to go. I mean, it's I'm not mechanically inclined at all, but it took me like 10 minutes. Ted says, well, I'm telling you, we got some interest in the bidet, y'all. I, I need to be a bidet salesman. Uh, Ted says, is it warm or cold water? So there's different options. Now, I, don't, I just have the cold water one because it's a very simple hookup. Now, you can buy a more expensive model that will allow you to run warm water to it. You basically, you're gonna to have to run that water line from somewhere. So I, I think like a lot of people run it from their sink over. And then there's some really expensive models that I think they're like, it's got like a little heated tank or something. But uh, mine, I just got the cold water. And the first time you use it, you're gonna, you're gonna feel violated first off. Cause I mean, it's like a damn pressure washer but it's gonna be cold. But after about a week or so, you get used to the cold and now it ain't even a, a big deal. So I wouldn't recommend anybody spend the extra on the warm water one. I'd just tell you to go with the cold and just you know take a week to get used to it. But uh, yeah, man, I need to be selling. I, they need to be paying me a commission here. Tim Evans says, love that Becca. How do you get women to give you money? You need to look damn good like I do, Tim. You look damn good and women just, they throw dollar bills at you. I ain't even gotta take my clothes off. Making dreams be says, how much you have in your kayak and toys? 
You know, somebody had asked me that last year, and I think we tallied it up on a live stream, and I can't remember now. I know the kayak, the kayak itself is like 2100. And then I added the motor, I've added the live scope, uh, battery, my cooler, all my gear. Probably five or 6,000 easily, I'd say. All toys and everything. Pontoon Jody says, that's one fancy outhouse. <laughs> Florida Channel Catfish and Sandra Hillary, $100, says, just because he is Justin. Thank you so much, Sandra. Man, Sandra making it rain. Sandra and Becca both hit me with a Ben Franklin on here today. I haven't seen... Uh, Will and Lynn Loy on here yet today. They sent me a belated birthday card. Went to check my post office box yesterday. They had a card and they had a hundred dollar bill in there for me. I got some good people on this channel, y'all. Spider Skull, he's going to try a squirt gun. You know, it's funny you say that, Spider Skull because they make a portable bidet and it's basically a damn squirt gun. I looked it up because when we went on vacation there to Florida, after I'd been using the bidet, I'm like, how the hell am I gonna go back to wiping my ass again after I've had the bidet? And so I looked it up and they have like a portable, but it, it was basically like a damn squirt gun. I was like, I ain't using that. Raymond Bases, if you ever eat Carolina Reaper peppers, you're going to wish for cold water <laughs> on that bidet. <laughs> William Morris said they thought you just needed some time live and they gave you a little and now they're letting you get a little time on your live stream. Yeah, these fish today though, Started with a bang, and now we've we've about ended on a whimper here. Maybe we shouldn't have moved back in this creek. I would have thought they'd be moving back as the day went on, but I could be wrong. Maybe we should have went further back up. No, Sandra, I haven't chummed. I um, can't throw the corn out as far as I'm casting, so um, didn't really think it was necessary to be chumming. <clears throat> Boy, Travis Morgan, he's, he's got some stories there too. <laughs> Yeah, Keith, I got to get me a slingshot. I've seen them and other carp people using a slingshot to get their corn out there where they're casting. I'm going to do that. And I'm wanting to do um, another thing I'm wanting to try for the carp is to suspend some baits while I'm out there catfishing. I want to get me a, um, I don't even know what they're called, but it's like a cage and you put your you put your bait inside that cage and then it's got some hooks dangling off the sides. I want to suspend those down there too. Um, my buddy Daniel there at Catfish Sumo took a GoPro and was in some fairly clear water and, and put it down there near his baits and he was having carp come up to his uh, catfish baits. And so I'm like, well, maybe I need to be suspending some baits, you know. I'm going to try. I can't remember what them things are called. I'll tell you what, Art, this conversation has deteriorated, ain't it? You'd be surprised, Art, how much I talk about bidets. I mean, like, literally, anytime I meet somebody new, it comes up somehow. I mean, it's been a life-changing product for me. There's Jeff Gerald. Jason Smith had to finish his Fishaholic video. I like Fishaholic stuff. I've been watching some of him. I can't remember how I found him, but he makes some really good videos. Yeah, 
Sandra's 36 inch carp she caught was suspended just above the ground. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with that technique some more. If I, I gotta get me some of them things. I can't remember what they're called, but I'm sure I can order them. Fishy Boy says a feeder cage. That may be what it's called. It's in the little wire cages and it's got some hooks coming off of it. Raymond says, if you're catching fish, we wouldn't be talking, but that's the truth. That's the truth. We'd be talking about catching fish, which I ain't doing much of. Solo Texan Adventures. The count's one, buddy. Keith says, a can of corn with holes poked in it with line and a bobber tied to it. And Keith, what are you, are you tying your hooks to the can somehow? Or having the hooks to your line and then just suspend it using like the can as your sinker or something? I'm having a hard time visualizing it. Visualizing it. Uh, Frankie, that's beautiful here. 60 something degrees today. Alex, Alex Saxon says, you're gonna feel violated. Yeah, I tell you, that first time you use it, man, it'll knock the doors open. you think you've had a prostate exam. Not the good kind either. Mr. Catfish says, them carps that went on strike. I feel like they have, man. I feel like they have. It's been a, I'm kind of, y'all come with me. Let's go on a nature walk one more time. But just before I wrap it up, I'm going to end the stream here, here shortly. If I can make it out of this mud, the sun's went over the trees now and I'm going to get up here, up on this bank and see if I can see some more carp activity. The wind's still blowing just a little bit, putting a ripple on the water. But maybe with the sun at a different angle, maybe I can see where some carp are at if I can. Well, I just took a little dive there, y'all, but I made it. Thankfully, the camera was going the other way. Y'all didn't see me fall, so it didn't happen. We're gonna take a little nature walk again. Just see if we can see some muddied up areas here in this creek that maybe them carp are feeding at. Make one last ditch effort here before we end it. That's that stump I had to navigate around to get down to that spot. Come up here. Old man on the hill, he's watching the rods back here. Yeah, I still can't see very good with that ripple. Yeah, even with my glasses on, I can't, can't see. Oh, that's frustrating. Well, Ted says your fishing went to the toilet. Yeah, went to the toilet with no bidet. All right, y'all, I'm gonna give a few more minutes here where we're at. I'll probably wrap it up. Time I get packed up, navigate my way out of this creek, get back to the car and make it home, it'll probably be 7 8 o'clock. How am I going to get back down there? I busted my knees climbing up this hill. It's going to be a harder fall if I go down off this bank. Okay. Y'all didn't know you was going on a... You tuned in to see some carp fishing and we've, we've went hiking more than we've went carp fishing today.
Stuart said, I just bit, yeah, I'm fine. Just pride hurt. Thankfully, y'all didn't really see it. <clears throat> right there was another carp busting right over there. They jumping up over there. They on the other side of the bank. That's where the sun's still shining at. It's on the other side of that creek bank. It's shaded over here now with the sun going down behind me. What comment was I reading? Mr. Catfish says, have you ever worried about walking onto a bank or is in this video onto land people get after you? You know, the last time I went carp fishing, I was on Fort Loudon and that's the high rent district over there, you know. And I pulled my kayak up on the shore, kind of like this, where the water's down, you know. And I was in a little, well, there's a wooded area. There was a house here and a house here. And the two women, man, they were pissed off at me that I was there. And I'm like, you know, this is, people own down to the high water mark. And once they drop the water down, this is all fair game. But them women, you know, they was, they wasn't happy about me being out there. So I ended up just leaving that day. I wasn't going to cause a stink about it, but yeah, some people do get pissed off at you. Hiking Mike says, use the weighted feeder cages that your leader line sides through, hook on the end of the leader. I think he's describing what I'm looking for. Yeah, that sounds right. That, that, Hiking Mike, that sounds like exactly what I was wanting to use. Randy Shaw says, when is your next video? I'll probably launch it tomorrow. I was going to, the, the original plan was to go live tomorrow with uh, Mark from Deuces Wild Fishing. And he called me earlier and said that he couldn't do it tomorrow. So that's when I said, well, I was out here filming a regular video. I'd just go live today. And uh, so I'll probably post the regular next catfishing video tomorrow. I hey, will see you later, old man on the hill. Keith says, go back and read his answer on the corn. I missed it, Keith. Let me scroll back up. You must have posted that on the nature walk. Oh, he says, Fishing, fish near bobber. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I could throw that can out there a long ways and then cast my lines around the can. Stephen Stanton says, Justin, you're the man. I ain't been the man today, buddy. One carp. We've seen more carp jumping than we've caught. Brandon Morales. Well, thank you, Brandon. Appreciate your super chat. There was another one over there on the other side of that bank, man. I think they followed that sun over there. The sun setting that direction the warmest water is probably on that bank and there's it's over here you know it's mud over there it's rocks so it's probably warmer water over there that's what i'm gonna say anyway that's how i'm gonna justify it wayne huska says he thinks the carp like sunny areas yeah oh i don't know if y'all saw that on camera i saw him come up out of the air I'd like to go over there, but it's going to be such an ordeal getting a kayak over there. This water is very shallow right here where I'm at. Where I've got my baits at is probably between one and two feet. And it's just inches all the way out through here. And carp, man, they're going crazy up there. there. There was another one jumping. So frustrating. So frustrating. I keep looking that direction, just waiting for them to come flying up again. <laughs> They're flying up, shooting me a bird. Oh, here's another one of them damn webcams. All right. 
I got them hid quick on that one. It must be a, Sunday must be a busy day for the webcam. I know it was at the strip club, but them webcams, that's the second one I've had to block. Stewart, so let's do it. Let's see if the carp prefer rocks over mud. Man, it's gonna be an ordeal getting over there. An ordeal. How many people we still got in here? We got 260 people, it's 6.30. Hmm. Michael, yeah, grass is always greener, that's the truth. I'm tempted. I can't fish much longer though. Brandon Ross, 20 spot, hell yeah, thank you, Brandon. James Croft, so he's here. I may just go over there and fish for a few minutes, y'all. If I got anybody, I gotta, you know, I gotta get out of this creek anyway. Like I said, it's gonna be an ordeal because I don't have my paddles in that hatch up there and um, I'm not digging it out. So it's gonna be, a, it's gonna be something getting out of this creek, getting back to some deeper water. But I may just stop over there and throw out baits for a few minutes on the way back to the car. And if anybody wants to come along, if you ain't got nothing else better to do tonight than watch me not catch fish, then I reckon you all can come with me. If I can make it over there, we'll, we'll fish 15, 20 minutes if we can get them. We can't do any worse over there than what we've done over here, that's for dang sure. Moving back further in this creek was definitely not the not the best idea I've ever had. Go ahead and turn that graph on. Kayak stuck in this mud too. Look at this mud right here, man. I'm gonna have to wash this kayak. Let's see what we can do here. I am going to, yeah, that thing right there, we ain't even picking up a depth. I think what I'm gonna do is this right here. I'm gonna try to just steer. I'm gonna have that motor just barely in the water. This is talent right here, folks. This is talent. I'm in 0.9 feet of water, according to this. Oh, come on. There was another carp jumping over there. This is what you do when you don't want to break out a paddle. Have your motor all cockeyed in the water. It works, by gosh. 1.6 feet now. We're almost out deep enough to... I'm gonna spook every one of these damn carp though. Going over through here. I bet I ain't got 112 people left still watching. Yeah, them carp I got there earlier was less than two feet of water I was catching them in. I'm gonna make my way over here right here in this little clearing in front of this house. And kids have moved on. And we'll throw baits out right in there where them carp have been jumping. I'm gonna try to stand up. I don't know if y'all can see all them dust plumes right there. Right there was another one. There's some carp over here, man. I'm spooking every last one of them too, but they're here. Okay. Turn that back off. My 
my makeshift paddle here, my measuring board. I'll get over just a little bit more, a little bit more shallow, and then I'm gonna hop out. Boy, y'all tuned in to see some carp fishing. Y'all have seen it all today. We've talked about pressure washing buttholes. We've talked about nature walks. I fell going up the hill. I've made a mess in this kayak with mud everywhere. I ain't got but one carp. Now I'm paddling with a measuring board. This is what you get on a, on a real kayak catfishing trip right here. It's always an adventure when you go fishing with me. This is why I couldn't be a fishing guide. I'd have people in all kinds of crazy situations. I'd have them doing everything except catching fish. Okay. Let's see if we can't catch us a car, oh my gosh. I may have to get my glasses back out. Let's go ahead and grab them. So we're gonna be staring into the sun now. made her move let's cast a let's cast a line out here for a few minutes I'm seeing all kinds of carp though seeing their burnouts there when I was spooking them coming up through there. I'm gonna take this one down here and throw it out a little bit this way where maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't spook these carp. We got anybody left? Lord, we still got 268 people watching. It's Sunday afternoon. Y'all think you'd have something better to do than watch me not catch fish. But I'm glad to have you. Y'all have made not catching fish a little bit more bearable today. Where'd I leave off at? Hey, there's Jeremy and Kim Langley back with a 10 spot. Thank you. Thank you to both of you. That's nice of you. Travis Morgan says jump up and down on the kayak. That would, by gosh, that would make some water come up through the scuppers, wouldn't it? There's Riley Taylor, says sorry was driving, couldn't watch. Can any moderators confirm if my super chat went through? I, I didn't see it, Riley. If it did, I didn't see it. Randy Shaw says he's with me till the end. Well, we'll see. We're gonna give it another 15 minutes or so. We know there's some carp over here. We've seen them jumping. We've seen the burnouts on the way over there here. I spooked some coming up. Hard not to spook them in a foot of water with that motor going through, but hopefully, hopefully this rod on the right here, hopefully the fish that maybe we're reaching over there didn't get spooked by me bringing the kayak over. So we'll see, we'll give it a little time. I'd like to get me one more if I can.
There's Noah V. What's going on, Noah? Hiking Mike says, promise the fishing god you'll use carp as catfish bait tomorrow. Now, if I said that, I'd get a 15 pounder or something. And again, I'd need a chainsaw to cut through the things. Them little ones are pretty easy to cut, but the big ones, man, they're just all scales and bones. Raymond B says he's fishing vicariously through me. You need to find somebody that catches fish, Raymond. Live through them. I ain't really got it done on the stream today. Philip Hollins that just got out the kayak catching ditch pickles. Pretty good day. I'm glad you had a good day, Philip. There's Riley. Ten spots. It's good to see you carp fishing. Been waiting a while. Could I get a shout out for my grandfather, Charles, who turned 75 today? Have fun and stay safe. Wow. Happy birthday, Charles. Man, that's awesome. 75. I hope you're having a heck of a day, Charles. You you light 75 candles, though, on that birthday cake, and you liable to cause a fire. Somebody going to call the fire department. So be careful with your birthday cake and celebration and all, but I appreciate you tuning in, man. And thank you, Riley, for the, for the super chat. Good luck on your trip, Michael Davis. Bumblebee Junction in the house. There's Callie. Been me a member for six months. Is finally off work. We did six hours straight, nonstop busy. Made roughly 10 grand in sales. Wow, that's a lot. And we finally have some open water. Going to be able to start fishing soon. Yeah, Callie, I watched um, um, ND Yak Angler's video yesterday. He got that musky there and, and had some open water. He's somewhere up there near you. and He's somewhere in North Dakota. I don't know exactly where we're at. I assume there's different towns in North Dakota, but it's kind of like Panama and Peru. It's, it's all the same to me. North Dakota's, it's the far north. But uh, I'm glad you got some open water and you're able to get out there again. Jacob 69, so what kind of rig are you using for carp? Just a little Carolina rig with a number four hook and about four or five kernels of corn. Joseph Hinkle, you didn't miss nothing by tuning in late. We got one fish so far. And another hour and a half of me talking about bidets and crazy people talking to themselves. XD Fishing been watching me for two years. That's a long time to stick with me. Long time. Most people don't make it through one video before they tune out. Stuart Coleman says, see Justin, that's why I watch 75 candles on a cake as a fire as it. Damn right it is. I mean, that, that can get out of control. And, and, you know, if you got curtains or something or a tablecloth, that could turn bad in a hurry. Yeah, spider skull, I probably should have put on some fresh corn on there. I don't know if corn goes bad on the hook, though, but probably wouldn't have been a bad idea to switch it out. Noah V says so he's happy to catch a stream again. Feels like it's been months. Yeah, I didn't do a whole lot of live streams during the winter months. I don't have a, I don't get a lot of views during the winter. It's, it's normally starts picking up for me about right now and then goes through Labor Day. And then the views kind of drop off. So I kind of treat YouTube like a seasonal deal since it's kind of seasonal for me. But we're going to start doing them a lot more now that it's picking back up and getting some better weather and all that. William Moore says, that's not true, Justin. More of us have watched your videos for the better part of two years than not. Well, I don't know, William. I don't know. 
I got 130,000 subscribers and only about 8,000 watch regularly. So <laughs> a lot of people tuned out. Callie says, Indy Yak Angler and I fish some of the same bodies of water, haven't run into each other yet. He also fishes Minnesota waters. He gets some pretty awesome content. Like he's one of the best kayak fishing channels in my opinion. He's got that, I think he DIY'd his camera to his hat and he gets some pretty awesome shots thank you for that money there too Callie by the way Callie loading me up as always Riley said he'd been here for two years too since I got to the old town yeah that was uh, 2020 I think I got that old town Mark Francis Noah Visa did your ocean shark videos do better this year not really, no. I shouldn't have posted them in February. I should have just held on to them and waited until later on the summer to post. One of them got 20 something thousand views. The others were in the teens. So no, typical, typical February. Of course, some of the videos I posted last week, my catfishing videos, uh, they ain't done worth a crap either. And we're into mid-March, so hopefully it'll pick up here next month. I keep waiting on it to take off any time. James Bradfield says I got him into kite cat fishing. Randy Shaw says, what's your water contaminated with? It's contaminated with contaminants. Probably a list of them there on Google. Rocky Roney says he's the reason, I'm the reason he got a kayak and started rigging kayaks. I love kayaks, but boy, I don't like rigging them. That's my least favorite thing. I've been wanting to change my live scope position here for a few weeks now. I just ain't, can't get around to doing it. Can't get motivation to do it. Gary Moore, so he's seen the one I got caught in the storm in 2018. Yeah, I've been caught out in a few. I think I remember the video you're talking about. Matthew Tomlinson says, catch a hundred pounder, that will get some views. I doubt it. Some of my videos with my biggest fish don't get watched. It's the videos where I'll catch three or four dinks. Those are the ones that YouTube always pushes for some reason. <laughs> Mark Francis with $2.79 of Canadian money. I like them Canadian dollars, they spend too. You're a good man, Mark. There's Jeremy and Kim back. So the fish in Illinois is still not there, at least our local lakes and ponds. We didn't get skunked, but we did drift the lake today. It's our second time trying, and we did okay. Well, I'm glad you had a good day out there. Even if the fish ain't cooperative, when you got weather like we got here today, it's a, it's a good day just to be outside. Stephen Gutierrez says, can anyone tell me if he has caught this stream? I don't know what he meant. Maybe he means what I have caught this stream. I don't know what you mean, Stephen. We got a we got a typo or something. Philip Hollins says the only way to fish is from a kayak. I agree. I'll end up getting a boat someday when I get old, but I don't miss it. I've had a few different boats through the years and I just enjoy fishing out of a kayak so much more. Well, thank you so much, Jesse Shepard. I appreciate you watching, man. Hey, we'll see you later, Keith. Thanks for tuning in today, buddy. Joshua House says, what's that website? It's uh, the Tushy 2.0 is what I have. I can't remember the name of the web, tushy.com or something tushy. Google tushy 2.0. It'll take you to their site. But the influencer thing, man, for the affiliate links, man, it is just a ridiculous application. T Cliff 1670 said, you're the reason I got a kayak also. 
I always wanted some kind of watercraft, never considered a kayak until I started watching your channel. I'm glad it inspired you to get one, T-Cliff. I hope you're enjoying it. Michael Davis said I should get some Gamagatsu G-Carp hooks. I'll look into them. Thanks. No, Charles, I didn't. Maybe I did, yeah, I think I did see a post on that big blue up there in the Ohio River. Raymond B said today it was nature hikes, the sunshine, even the mud. Sometimes we don't have to catch fish to have fun. Thanks for having us along. Well, thanks for coming along, Raymond. I will say this bank here is much more um, easier to navigate than the one over there where my feet kept getting stuck. I don't know if we're going to get another one or not, though. Let's give it 10 more minutes. Let's give it to 7 o'clock. And I'm going to have to get out of here. It'll be, it'll be after 8 o'clock time I get home. The girlfriend be pissed at me. You know, she got she always got to plan her dinner around what I'm doing. Usually I'll tell her I'll be home at a certain time, and then, well, you know how it is. You know, you got to catch that one more fish or... You know, in my case now, oftentimes I run into people when I get back to the car, I'm loading up the kayak, somebody will recognize me and then, you know, I don't want to be rude. So that'll take 10, 15, 20 minutes. And then next thing you know, I'm an hour later getting home. But at least there's documented proof that I was at the lake and not at the mouse's ear. So she can't ever accuse me of that. But nevertheless... Matthew Tomlinson said so he coming to Tennessee in April to carp fish, renting a houseboat. I hope you do better on the carp than I've done out here in the live stream, buddy. <laughs> well, there's Lynn, uh, Lynn Loy. So just join the viewing. Well, thank God you've missed the last two hours of it here, Lynn. It's been terrible. But uh, I was just talking about you earlier there, Lynn, how you sent me that birthday card with uh, Ben Franklin in it. That was nice of you. I hope, I hope you told Will I said thank you too. I know you control the, the budget in that house, but let, at least let him think he was a part of it. <laughs> right there was another one, by gosh, right there in front of us, man. Right there in front of us. They're just jumping up and flipping us the bird, man. Mick TR1 says, what's up, Justin? Just wondering what video editing software you use and if you have any tips for minimizing the amount of time it takes to edit videos. So I use iMovie because I'm cheap and it's free on Apple computers. And so um, one tip that I could give you to, I don't know what kind of camera you got, but um, as far as editing the videos, one thing that's saving me a lot of time is trying to delete clips off my GoPro before I get home. So a lot of times I think I'm be about to get bit and I'll turn the camera on so I can get the takedown. Well, maybe I don't catch a fish or maybe, you know, it didn't bite and I was just wrong. Well, if I don't go ahead and delete that clip, then when I get home, I got 57 clips I got to sort through. So go ahead, if you got a GoPro where you can delete the clips as you go for the stuff that you don't want to keep, that's a big help on saving time. But otherwise, it's just, there was another one right there. Dead gum carp. But uh, otherwise, editing's just a tedious process, man. Just one of them things you got to do. Off S is Mouse's Ear 2.0 official sponsor. They should sponsor me. I plug them all the time. Not, I don't literally plug the Mouse's Ear girls. You catch diseases on them, but I plug their business all the time. They should be willing to sponsor me. I bet you I've, I bet you I've sent 37 people, all these truck drivers that watch my channel. Every time they come through Knoxville, they're stopping at the Mouse's Ear because I've told them to. I've told them about it. I 
Oh, Lynn said today's Will's birthday. Well, happy birthday, Will. I hope you had a Ben Franklin in a birthday card too. Dig the voice. He got him a Hobie 360. Garmin, a live well. He's, he's rigged up, man. Bumble base as long as I don't show up at home covered in stripper glitter. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't go over well. Charles Barker said they moved to the other side when you did. I think that's right. I think that's right, man. Jones Family Medicine says, do you prefer a pedal prop or pedal blades for a kayak? I think you're talking about the Hobie Mirage Drive versus like a bicycle prop style. I like the bicycle pedal in motion. Um, you know, the Hobie Drive is lighter weight. It's faster. It's better in current. But for me, from a comfortability standpoint, the bicycle motion's much better on my back than the Hobie motion. I'm, I'm on an island with that. Uh, most people have the exact opposite opinions. But uh, for me, here's Callie back with another 20 spot. Says, I'm hoping our water levels recover enough to have access to carp this summer. I always catch mine on night crawlers. And carp love to surface all around your bait and never bite. Yeah, that's what we're dealing with right now, Callie. Carp jumping up all around us. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, y'all. I'm going to give it just a few more minutes, but I am going to reel in right quick and just put on some fresh corn. It's maybe got a little bit more, got a little bit more sugar on it. I mean, there's carp right out there in front of us. Well, we've had this corn here on for a couple hours now. It can't hurt. It may not help, but it can't hurt. I'm going to cast this out. We're going to give it just a few more minutes. And then whether they bite or not, i got to get to the house. I don't want to sleep on the couch tonight. All right. Yeah, this bank right here is so much easier to walk on. Look, right there was another one. Dead gun carp. I'm, I'm a terrible carp fisherman, y'all. I'm terrible at it. I don't deny it. But, you know, I mean, I come out here today, I saw some in the creek. I saw where they was tearing up the water there. And I set up on the shore. I got three bites, had two of them pull the hook. And so I thought, I'm going to go live, you know. Go live. We got one within 10 minutes or so. And then we ain't done jack squat since then. It's so frustrating. I mean, I can talk about bidets all day long, as you all have witnessed today, but I'd much rather be reeling in some fish occasionally. Get me about four or five kernels on here. I went to these back to these number four hooks. Uh, them carp fishermen, you know, they own me all the time. But I don't know what I'm doing, and, and really I don't. But they all about getting me to use smaller hooks and stuff. And them number eight hooks I was using there before I went live. I mean, I lost two fish because they just pulled out. All right. We got us some fresh corn out there. Oh, Ingalls brand. Libby's sweet corn. There it is. You know what these carp are waiting on is they're waiting on me to leave before they eat any more corn because they know I'm going to dump the rest of that can out there. All 
Alucard AD says, what happened to your old town? I've still got my pedal drive, my big water. I sold the autopilot because I got tired of hearing the noise, the beeping sound. Everybody kept complaining in my videos on the because it kept picking up on the microphones and stuff. So I sold it and just put a bow mount motor on my Hobie. It's worked out pretty well. It gets a little sketchy in the Hobie and rough water because you take water over the bow and the Hobie hatch sucks. You get a bunch of water in there. Ian Tipton, so you're trying to catch them for, I'm just trying to catch them for fun. I actually enjoy catching carp for some strange reason. Bumble bases on carp. I usually set the hook, point the rod right at him, let him pick up the slack and then set it again before I start reeling. Tough mouths. Yeah, that's probably some good advice right there. I sure would like to get one more here, y'all, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Noah Vase says, I ought to try that fly rod again for carp. It's funny you mentioned that, Noah. I'll tell you all a carp story or a fly fishing story here. So God knows we got nothing but time since these carp ain't biting. But so last fall, I took a fly fishing class because I'd been watching Drew looking fishies videos. He's, he makes great videos, he's awesome. And I thought, I want to catch me some fish on the fly. So I went and took that class. There was another one right there. God, I hate these carp. Um, but anyway, I took that class and it was probably one of the worst fishing experiences of my life. $300 I'll never get back. Whole damn day, you know, half the day anyway, we spent out there in the classroom learning how to tie all these knots. Then I got to go out there and practice all these casting motions and everything. And then the second half of the day, we go to the mountains. And we're in this stream up there in the Smoky Mountains. And I could not stay out of the tree. All them fancy casts that we did out there behind the building at their shop, you can't do that shit in the mountains. There's too many trees hanging over. I spent all afternoon just in the trees, breaking off. Then I was getting my flies hung in the rocks. It was terrible. I got back to the car that day. After that class is over, I said, I ain't never, ever going fly fishing again. So anyway, I'm down in Florida. Fast forward a few months. I'm down there in Florida a couple months ago. And I've been out there catching sharks. And I pulled my kayak up on the shore. And uh, I'd launched at a little park there on the intercoastal. And there was this old lady come up to me, and, you know, she's talking to me, asking what I caught that day and whatnot. And um, she was from Colorado, and she said that she liked doing a lot of fly fishing back home, which that prompted me to tell her my fly fishing story from hell. And she told me, she's like, well, you shouldn't be, shouldn't be doing traditional fly fishing. You don't need all that stuff. You need to be doing tenkara. And I didn't know what the hell tin car was. But anyway, I was like, yeah, I'll look that up sometime. Well, then I forgot about it. Well, the other day, something, I come across something and it triggered in my mind about tin car and I looked it up and I'm like, man, that looks like that's so much better than regular fly fishing. You don't have no reel. You don't have a bunch of line you got to cast. You don't have all them fancy knots and whatnot. You're using one fly. They don't, they don't take like 67 different flies in a the box. They all use the same fly over and over. And I'm like, that's so much simpler than regular fly fishing. So I think I'm going to give that a shot. So uh, anyway, Noah, uh, you got me on a long-winded rant there. God knows we got time because of these fish. But I may be doing some Tenkara stuff at some point this summer. Tony Jessen says, hi from Idaho. He's good fly fishing up there in Idaho. They got a lot of trout up there. Robert McLaughlin says, how much stiffer are the golly whopper poles compared to the medium heavy green rods you've been using? Um, 
I mean, backbone's pretty comparable. The tip's a little different. A um, little bit stiffer tip. The overall action's a little bit different. But, uh, I mean, as far as the backbone goes, it's pretty comparable. Victor Puliosis need to roll cast in the mount. That's about all you could do up there was that little wrist flipping thing and making the line flip over. I mean, they had me practicing all these backhanded casts and stuff. And I'm like, hell, you can't do that up there with all them overhanging trees. That's about the most frustrating I've ever been in my life was trying to fly fish up there in the mountains. But that 10 car looks a lot better. I think that's, uh, I think that's what I'm gonna try next. Oh, 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 right here, right here. Oh my gosh, we got one. We got one. Switching out that corn, by God. Well, for the 108 of you that have stuck around, we're getting one more. I was just on the wrong bank all afternoon. I should have been over here in the sun. This one here, he, right now, he's got that hook in the jaw. He's wishing he'd jumped up and flipped a bird like his friends did. Come on over here, carp. Well, I'm feeling a lot better about now. We only had to wait about two hours between fish. Could have sold some bidets during that time if I had a link. Yeah, that's another one. He's too big for me to be using for bait. I'm telling you, they get this size right here and bigger. You can't hardly cut them up. You, I mean, you, you about need a machete to be cutting the dang things up. I'm on, I don't know, I don't think Becca's still watching, but if she is, she gave me $111 earlier, so we're gonna dedicate this one to Becca. Oh, 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 I pulled that hook out. I pulled that hook out, y'all. As I was, as I was trying to pull him up on the bank. He's gonna get a muddy mess now. We don't need to get our hands on him. Let me just put the camera down here. Go home, carp. Say hi to Becca Mudtramp, would you? She gave me $111 earlier. Sandra, we dedicated your friend to Sandra Hillary earlier. Florida Channel Catfishing. Why don't you go the other way? Go the other way. There you go. There you go, carp. All right. By gosh, we got us another one. Let's put some more corn on out there and do it again. He's flung mud everywhere. He got my line all. Well, he got my line all jacked up too, didn't he? It's all twisted up there. There you go, carp. He just had to. That's all messed up, but we're going to roll with it. So I ain't going to fish much longer anyway, so. I sure am happy to get another fish. It's been a long time between fish. I mean, it's probably been a solid two hours because we got that first one shortly after, just a few minutes after the stream started. I'd like to get one more. We need to get one more here because it's Will Loy's birthday today. We need to get one to dedicate to him. All right. I think we're about ready to cast back out. That's about, that's about six kernels on there. That's fun, everybody. That was fun. I hope we can do it again. I don't remember what I was talking about before that fish interrupted us.
there's double A Arn Anderson back with a $20 bill. He says, off the subject of carp and bidets, but what are some tips on locating skipjack? I have a tough time finding them or knowing what to look for. Thanks in advance. Well, thank you, double A. Um, best advice I could give you with skipjack is to troll for them. I do a lot of trolling to locate them. A lot of times they'll be there, but you know, you just won't see them. They, they just won't be busting the surface. So uh, in the fall through early spring, the creeks, backwater creeks, places like this, um, you know, obviously you need a little bit more depth here uh, than this particular creek, but these backwaters are great places to find them fall to early spring. Now, early spring, they start making their runs up river. So if you got some dams, like hydroelectric dams, you'll find them, they get stopped there at the dams. So you'll find them up there. Um, here in East Tennessee, for instance, like we've got a place called Forks of the River where two rivers come together. They make their runs, you, you, you find them up there. So uh, that'll be good from spring through summer, you'll find them at the dams. Now, once you get on into summer too, you'll find a lot of fish out in the main lake. Just, they'll be, you know, out over 50, 70 feet deep. But they'll be up near the surface, just kind of suspended out there. And that's where trolling really comes into play. You'll just find them out through there, out in the middle of nowhere, it'll seem like. But if you do enough moving, you'll eventually come across them. And then again, once you get through summer and then on the fall, they start moving to the backwaters again. So hopefully that'll help you out there, double A. I got a lot of videos on my channel. Well, a lot. I got a few. Four or five videos skipjack fishing. No visa, man, it makes it so much easier to catch bluegill and yellow bass with a fly rod, those itty bitty baits. Yeah, they make it look so fun with the fly fishing on video, but then once I actually do it, it's more complicated than it looks. <laughs> Raymond B, $10 has got one. Heck yeah, man. Thank you so much, Raymond. Bumblebee said, once he got it right, that was the laziest swim off he's ever seen. <laughs> it's probably the one that's been jumping up, flipping us off over here. He's probably used all his energy doing that. Noah says, it's Florida Channel Cat Fishing Sandra. Yeah, she changed her channel name from Sandra Hillary to Florida Channel Cat Fishing. Stink Shag says, how many casts are you allowed to make after you say this is my last cast? Yeah, it's 17. I should have done had my last cast, but we're going we're gonna to go a few more minutes. Yeah, Noah and Nikki was in here earlier, actually. Pure Catfish says, do you still use your ugly sticks for anything? I don't. I sold a couple of them on eBay. And then uh, I've got a couple more. My eBay auctions got hijacked. So I still got a couple of them I got to sell. Lynn says she likes to fly fish. You must be better at it than me, Lynn. I'm gonna get me one of them Tenkara rods, though. There's Fizz Bang with a 20. Says, love watching you, bud. Well, I'm probably a little bit more exciting when we're actually reeling in fish. If you have been watching the previous two hours, you may not have uh, been love watching me so much, but I appreciate your super chat, man. We've done nature walks and a lot of talking about cleaning buttholes in this live stream. Noah says, so you gonna let me send you some skipjack jigs this year? Um, I mean, you ain't gotta send me nothing. No, I appreciate it, but uh, you ain't gotta send me nothing. I like using them things that I can get affiliate sales with. Put a little coin in my pocket to use uh, baits I can link online to Amazon and stuff. <laughs> Daniel Pillows is first live I've been able to catch and glad you got another man for us to say, well, thank you. I appreciate you joining the club, Daniel. For, you, for Daniel, for you and uh, the other people who've joined the membership thing today, there's a community tab 
on my channel. And if you click on that, there's a post there that has the discount code. So uh, Catfish Club members get 15% off at Catfish Sumo and free shipping. And there's also one for Mustad on there too. So, and there's a merch discount code also for like hoodies and t-shirts and stuff like that. So be sure to check that out. Well, thank you, Callie. Noah said, that's a very polite no. You better be plugging them links in. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, those links, I use Amazon links, and of course I got some with Catfish Sumo too, but I don't have to do a whole lot of plugging for stuff. Uh, people just watch the videos and they see me catching fish on a rod or, or you know, a crappie magnet or whatever, you know or gulp minnow and then they go click the links in the video description and then it's easy money i mean i don't even have to i just update them once every few months usually somebody will comment on a video and say your links aren't working i'll think well, okay what's well, time for me to go update them then so once every three or four months i'll do that and i mean that's that's the easiest money you can make as a as a youtuber other than going live just going live here not catching fish and having people super chat you it's pretty easy too but um yeah those amazon links are Easy money. I wish Crappie Magnet and Berkeley would give me a link. You know, I've I've reached out to both of them in the past, and they don't. I guess they ain't got no interest in working with me because they don't. They don't even bother telling me no or screw you or anything. They just don't respond. And so you know, it's frustrating because I know. I've sold thousands of jars of gulp minnow and that's, you know, Amazon tracks all that. I can see how many clicks I've gotten. I can see how much has been sold. I've literally sold thousands of jars of gulp minnows from my ultralight videos. But yet Barclay won't give me the time of day, you know, and I, it'd be so much better if I could send people directly to their site versus Amazon. Because Amazon, first off, Amazon only gives me 3%. And then they charge these companies that sell on their platform like 30%. So it would be so much better for them to just give me more money and me send them directly to their own site. But some of these companies, you know, they ain't interested. So that's my, that's my affiliate rant right there for the 249 of you still watching. Bumble bases, he's hoping a 222 pound flathead with a taste for corn on the cob comes by. I don't know if we'd landed on this tackle. <laughs> this shallow water, we might at least get to see him, but I don't know if we'd, I don't know if we'd have a chance at landing him. I keep thinking that, I keep thinking that I'm gonna be getting some cats in the shallows anytime. But when I have done some catfishing in the shallows lately, I haven't done worth a crap. And, and the backwaters, they've been loaded with bait. Uh, you know, we've seen, we ain't seen me reel in many carp, but we've seen a bunch of them in here. Um, last week there, I was getting the crappie in the shallows. But the cats, I just haven't been doing any good. I've still been getting them deep. All my better quality fish lately have been coming deep still. So I'm gonna ride that deep water bite until I can get something consistent going in the shallows. Bumblebee said, you said you wanted something to help pull you in the kayak. Oh, I could, buddy. We could lasso a big flathead. He could take me all the way back to the car. That'd be awesome. Stuart Coleman says, I'm the MJ of fishing. Yeah, I'm not a basketball fan, but I would say Jordan's definitely better than LeBron. I think everybody, everybody outside of Ohio thinks that. I don't even know if people in Ohio like LeBron anymore since he's left them again. I just can't get into basketball. I like football. I like NFL. I like college. And now that baseball spring training started back, I'm, girlfriends make me watch that crap. 
she had a Dodgers on the spring training thing the other day. I was just ready to beat my face against the wall listening to that. Eric Karras, I think, was announcing for him last year, Oral Hershiser. You know, back when Vin Scully was still announcing, I could tolerate it better then because Vin Scully could at least tell a story. Even if you didn't give a crap about baseball, you could listen to Vin Scully talk. But Oral Hershiser, I called him Oral the Borel because he was just unbearable to listen to. Hell of a pitcher in his day. I mean, when I was a kid back in the 80s, Oral Hershiser was the man, but he is not much for commentating. I hope he ain't watching my live. He might be one of them famous people watching my live stream. He, he's going to be mad at me because I called him Oral the Borel. Lynn says I need to get on home. I do need to get on home. I'm going to give it. What time is it? It's, let's, let's give it to 730, Lynn. Let's go to 730, see if we can get one more. I'm already going to be late getting home anyway. Girlfriend's going to be ticked off, so. She's not going to be any more ticked off if I get home at 9 versus getting home at 830, so. Stuart Coleman says, what's your favorite football team? Vols, buddy. Tennessee, man. Go Vols. NFL, I don't really have a team. Um, you know, when Peyton was playing, everybody here in Tennessee, we pulled for Indianapolis. I can't, I can't get behind the Titans. They're too boring to watch. They're, I mean, they're just Derrick Henry and nothing else. I just can't get into them. I used to hate Tom Brady, but the older he gets, the more I like him. Because, you know, he's an old guy still getting it done. And I ain't too much younger than Tom Brady. So I, I've, I've been pulling for him the last couple of years. I'm going to pull for him till he retires. And then um, I'll probably be, I really like that Joe Burrow kid. So I'll probably start pulling for Cincinnati. Joe Burrow is the least exciting to watch. There's Dylan Smith from South Carolina. Noah said he... Yeah, you get 20% off, Noah. That must add link. Travis Gentry says there's been a lot of moves in the NFL. Yeah, it's been exciting. You know, used to, big names didn't change teams. And now the off seasons, there's something for these sports talking heads to talk about all off season now. I really surprised that Deshaun Watson went to Cleveland. I figured he'd go to Atlanta or New Orleans, you know. I didn't think Cleveland had a shot. So now this coming week, the drama will be with what's going to happen with Baker Mayfield. That'll give me something to listen to this week. I don't really like Baker Mayfield or Cleveland, but I do. Here's a fun fact that none of you care about. So the owner of the Cleveland Browns, Jimmy Haslam, is also uh, Tennessee, our... our uh, University of Tennessee football team. He's our biggest booster. And our piss poor management of the coaching hires that we have had for the last decade, basically ever since Fulmer got fired here, Haslam has had his hands on it. So ultimately, most Tennessee people, most Tennessee football fans, we blame Jimmy Haslam for a lot of our dysfunction here. So it makes me very happy to see the Cleveland Browns suck every year. So uh, anyway, there's the fun fact that 221 of you didn't want to know. Eighty-five says 240 million guaranteed. Yeah, ain't that something, man? 240 million dollars guaranteed. He may be suspended half the season with all this lawsuit stuff. He's probably going to need all $240 million too, to, to settle all them lawsuits that women's got against him. Can't fault him for wanting to get some tail, though. Oh, boy, he sure pissed a lot of them women off. Yeah, I remember years ago, of course, this is before... This is before social media was a thing, but, <clears throat> you know, Brett Favre had gotten in trouble for it. So you imagine now if Brett Favre had uh, got friendly with his masseuse in today's time versus 20 years ago. They, they'd put Brett Favre out to pasture again, man.
Travis Gentry says, me too, and I hate Baker. Yeah, I, you know, I could probably get behind Baker Mayfield's story, you know, if he wasn't on every damn commercial. But when I see your face on every commercial, him, Patrick Mahomes, and Aaron Rodgers, there was another carp over there. I just can't pull for any one of them because I see them too damn much. Those State Farm commercials with Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers, I, they're so obnoxious. And I can't even remember, I don't even know what company that, that Baker Mayfield, it's always at home with Baker Mayfield thing. I don't even know what company he's advertising for. I just shut down on it. But I listen to Colin Cowherd a lot. I love Colin Cowherd. He's my favorite sports show. And he hates Baker Mayfield too. So I always listen to his rants about him. Turkey Man 44 says, water looks good. Makes me want to buy a kayak and sell the boat. Yeah, you definitely wouldn't be getting a boat. I mean, I couldn't hardly get the kayak up through here. This water just gets so shallow with our water level being down. You can't get a boat very far back. Earlier, before I went live, there was a boat that come to that point right there and through the cast net got some shad. But once you get it back about right in here, it's you know a couple feet deep and progressively shallower on the way back. Travis Gentry says he hopes Russ does well. Yeah, Russell Wilson's another one that I just can't. I mean, he seems like a good guy, but I and, I, and he's a hell of a player. But I just can't. I just can't get into him. I think he'll have a good year in Denver, but I mean that's a tough division. Eddie Fife said, Favre sent a picture of himself to some women that work for the Jets. If that happened today, he'd. But if he sent a picture today, them women would be rich. It'd be all over the internet. Raymond B says, what a pleasure being here today. No world events, no war, no recession, no food shortages, or failing economy talk. Just a good old day of fishing. Well, thank you, Raymond. Yeah, we'll leave all the news talk to other people, but we will talk about bidets and, and football and how much all Tennessee football fans hate Jimmy Haslam. There's Stan Etherlee from Gallatin, Tennessee, Old Hickory Lake. My buddy Mark Cooper's out there on Old Hickory right now. Top Knox fishing, he went out there for a wedding and been doing some fishing out there. He'd caught a big blue earlier, I saw on Facebook earlier today. What do you think, y'all? We're going to get another one here? I'd like to get one more, but I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm glad we got that other fish and we moved over here to this bank. I really thought, though, man, I really thought there'd be better, more fish on back up in this creek because I know that water back there has got to be several degrees warmer after the sun's baked it all day, but... There's definitely carp out here in front of us. We've seen enough of them splashing. They just ain't, uh, ain't wanting to bite. Look at Bumblebee, man, posting my Amazon link for the reels. You're a good man, Bumblebee. There's Matt Holacek, 999. Thank you, Matt. He likes for me to give a shout out. I ain't done that yet, have I? We've been live for three hours now i ain't done no shout out to the troops absolutely shout out to the troops first responders uh, firefighters ems police not state troopers though not state i ain't shouting out no state troop let, let me ask you something matt you're you're a police officer up there in new york uh, he's a marine too up there y'all i want to get a i want to find out from a from a cop here matt holacek what do you guys think about state troopers? Do other cops like state troopers? Because everybody I know hates them. I personally hate state troopers. And even back when I was working in the hospital as a nurse, a normal cop comes in bringing in a patient or you know somebody needing a, um, you know somebody had been in a fight or whatever. One of their prisoners come in. Cops are cool to work. With. There was another big carp right out there. That damn carp. Come over here and eat this corn carp. But anyway. 
you know, a normal cop comes in or sheriff deputy, they're cool. You know, you can talk to them, you can get along with them. But you get a state trooper come in, you know, they're just cocky as all get out. They think they own the world. They run the place. I got pulled over by one the other day. He wrote me a ticket. I can't, he didn't write the ticket amount on there. I got to wait a few days for it to show up in the system, but piss me off. You know, he, he was going one direction. I was going the other. He did a, he sped up, drove through the median to come get me. And uh, anyway, I don't like state troopers. I ain't shouting them out, but I'm curious to know what other cops think of state troopers. If y'all hate them as bad as I do. Dane Andrews, the state troopers in Southern Ohio. Are rough. Yeah, I tell you, every time I've had a few tickets in my day, I got a little bit of a lead foot. I don't deny it. I have broken the law a few times. But every time I've gotten a ticket in my life, it has been from a state trooper. I've never got one from a local cop. Most cops are cool, but uh, state troopers, man. I had one in North Carolina. This is 2011. It was my first travel nursing assignment. It had been 2011. Asheboro, North Carolina, I was working. And I was coming back home and I was driving through Winston-Salem and a state trooper got me. He wrote me, a, he gave me a misdemeanor charge. He didn't just write me a ticket, he gave me a misdemeanor charge. So I had to go to court, ended up having to go to court three times and I got what's called a prayer for judgment, which basically means if you don't get a ticket within three years, it kind of disappears. So I ended up spending, it cost me like $190 is what it cost me in, in court costs. And I'm like, you know, you could have just wrote me a ticket for $300 and let me go. But instead, I had to go over the court over there three damn times because he wrote me a misdemeanor charge. So I don't like state troopers. That's my, uh, that's my rant on state troopers today, y'all. Charles Barker says they have jurisdiction in the entire state. I don't, you know, that's something else I don't understand. Like every time I see a state trooper, all they're doing is writing traffic citations. They're traffic cops. I don't know why they got such a bad attitude and why they're so pissed off. I mean, all they're doing is sitting out on the interstate writing people tickets. They're not having to go into these houses and break up domestic disputes and, and you know, and, and go chase down people who are doing armed robberies and putting their life on the line. They're writing damn tickets. They're writing speeding tickets. That's all they do. I don't understand why they got such a bad attitude. Boy, y'all got me ranting here on the damn state trooper. I got a state trooper watching right now. He's going to be pulling me over on the way home. Jeremy and Ken Lane said, got Jeremy the golly whopper and the master. I'm wanting a couple more poles, but I'm looking at pink and purple ones. I'd rather buy from you, though. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know if you're going to get a, a pink pole from me there, Kim. But I hope Jeremy likes his rods. <laughs> Holichek. Okay, here's Holichek. He responded. He said, up here, state troopers are police. We don't have locals. We have some sheriff's deputies, but we handle most of the call. Oh, hell, Matt Holichek, he's one of my biggest donors. He is a state trooper. I done ruined that. <laughs> Noah said so he saved eight bucks with that code. Heck yeah, man. That's awesome, man. I'm glad you put it to use. Made me a few bucks with that too, man. I forget how much Mustad gives me. I think it's 10 or 15% they give me. I can't remember. Yeah, I think most people here hate the state troopers. I've started a rant about them state troopers. Holichek says, no, some guys make us look bad. We pride ourselves on giving us a good image up here in New York. We don't have any quotas or nothing like that. You know, Matt, it's funny you mention quotas because I think around here they must have quotas because you won't see them at all for a while and then you'll have a two or three day stretch where they're just getting everybody. And so I really think they've got quotas or something they gotta meet when they're just out doing their speed traps and stuff. There's Lynn. Lynn got one too from a state trooper and Powell. Bumblebee. He says they're enforcing state laws. Yeah. 
They something all right. They enforcing something. Holacek, four ninety nine. He says he's a state trooper. They're barely writing tickets, but full service agency. They handle all the calls. Yeah, around here, Matt, it, we got uh, we got local police, and we got the sheriff, and then all the state troopers do around here is just write tickets. They got it easy. I, that's why I don't understand why they're so pissed off all the time. Why they got such a bad attitude. I mean, when they would come into ER with bringing somebody in, you would think that they just God's gift to everybody walking in there. We all hated the state troopers. Regular cop, sheriff's deputy, no problem. But the boy, them troopers, man. Double A says Jimmy Haslam's probably a state trooper when he's not destroying football. <laughs> yeah. Oh, his brother, um, Governor Haslam, down here, he was. I don't know if he's still governor or not. He was. Uh, they own pilot, um, pilot um, truck stops, gas stations. So they're loaded with money. That's where all their money comes from, the gas business. Bumble says he feels entitled to 1% of 1% of your profits from Noah's purchase. <laughs> That's awesome. I I'll, 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 I got to take out about 30% in taxes before I can send you your 1% though, Bumblebee. So the stamp will end up costing you more than, than, than what you get from it. <laughs> There's Matt back with another 999. He says, I never take anything personally. Most people think of troopers as robots and for good reasons. My mission on a daily basis is to make someone have a good image of the place. Well, you know, you're a good man. Matt Holacek, you're a good man. If there was more state troopers out there like you, I wouldn't hate them as bad. But the ones here in Tennessee and North, I won't say all state troopers then, I'll just say the ones in Tennessee and North Carolina, that's the ones I've dealt with. Uh, all of them are the bad ones. Josh Howell says, you got any travel and fishing coming up? I like the shark videos. Um, no current plans. Um, hoping to go to Texas this fall if I have a good year on YouTube. And I've uh, been talking with Elias V from Elias V Fishing Channel there on YouTube. Uh, and I think him and I may end up going to the Florida Keys together for a month next winter, either January, February. And uh, go down there, split the, split the costs and go down there for a month or so. I may go to Ohio too, just depending on the weather. They got that uh, Ohio kayak catfishing trail starting up, and Kayak Mike runs that, and he's been he's been real good, you know, with promoting the rods and stuff. He's given away one of my rods at every every one of their trail events. So if the weather's looking good that week up there in Ohio, I think that first one's on Hoover Hoover Lake or Hoover Reservoir or Hoover something. I think it's called. Um, I may go to it possibly. No guarantees, but I may take a trip up there. It's at the end of April. Holacek says, hey, I'm no God's gift to anyone. I can't ever claim that, ask my wife. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> James Bradfield, so he back, I back the blue too. Our state troopers wear brown. I back the blue, not the brown. Now I clean the brown with a bidet for those of you that missed the first part of this live stream. There's Callie back with another 20, says I have this uncanny ability to avoid tickets when I get pulled over. I think it's because they think I'm 12 and get embarrassed and they realize I'm 35, or it's what my coworkers call the Callie charm. I need some of that Cali charm when I get pulled over. You know, most of the time you hear like cops giving you a break, you know, if you've got scrubs on. Especially, you know, for us working the ER because, you know, we may have to save their life someday. But them state troopers, there's another carp over there. 
that night I got pulled over in North Carolina and got the misdemeanor charge. I had my scrubs on, my name badge. I'd, I was driving home after work that night. He didn't give a crap. I was like, man, if he ever comes in as my patient, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be choosing the wrong size catheter. <laughs> Holacek even got a ticket. He said he was going 79 and a 65 or 70. Yeah, that trooper the other day got me for a 69 and a, and a 55. I don't think I was going 69, but I can't, I can't argue. It was on the highway. Wasn't like I'm driving through a school zone. Everybody goes fast through there. There's Peter Stanley from Australia. Lord, we've had England, Germany, Africa, and Australia now. Yeah, I am going to be late for dinner, ain't I? There's Bishop. He says, Justin, you convinced me to get a bidet. <laughs> That's awesome. There's Killer Bee Outdoors. Yeah, I may, I may fish with him down there in Texas when I get down there this fall. There's Holacek, he says, you never ride a medical professional. Well, by gosh, you do. Some of them, the ones around here do. And I got that misdemeanor charge. I was scrubs, had a name badge on, the whole deal. He didn't give a crap. The lawyer, I had to get a lawyer, you know, and I had to fight the charge. And that was the first thing he mentioned to the judge and they was asking for that prayer for judgment thing, they call it, to defer the ticket was uh, that I was an ER nurse. So the judge was more lenient with it than the, than the trooper was. There's Keith, yeah, Keith's another Tennessee fella. He knows all about them, them troopers around here. Killer bee outdoors says, my wife is an ER nurse, so I better not be giving any tickets to any nurses. <laughs> I remember one time, I can't remember where I was at, but a trooper had got one of our ER docs on the way to work. And uh, then she never did get out of the ticket, I don't think. She called somebody that she knew there and never could get out of it because he was just unwilling to to do anything. I mean, they're just a different breed, man. Again, most cops and sheriff deputies I've met have been cool, but I'm gonna quit ranting on the troopers. I like Matt Hall. Matt Holacek's the one and only trooper that I've ever liked in my life. He seems like a good guy. I'm gonna quit ranting on him. Yeah, Holacek, he says, for the record, I think I probably paid you enough to take care of that ticket. You probably have, Matt. That's a true story. <laughs> you probably have. I got to find out how much it is. It's uh, He didn't write the ticket amount on there. And when I called about it, they asked me what the ticket amount was. I said he, did, he left it blank. And so it's going to be a few days or whatever, and I ain't called back. Here comes somebody to get some shad. Yeah, Holacek, I think I still got your email. I should still have it there in my email somewhere. Riley says, I noticed you changed your reels on the gollywopper rods. Any specific reason for changing? Just curious, plan on getting a set over the next couple months. Uh, no, not really. I, my Seagates were getting kind of rough or sounding rough. And so I was going to either have to do some maintenance or get new reels. And I don't like doing maintenance. So I was like, I'll just sell my Seagates. And um, I had a striper fisherman tell me good things about them Dakotas. And I looked at them and I liked the low profile. And so I thought I'll just try them out. And so I got some of them and really liked them. And so, but no, the Seagates I had were are great reels. All fast says, do you still have your personal parking spot in front of them? I should. They ought to have my name on the spot out there. VIP. Yeah, 
Yeah, our carp's about to get spooked here in a minute. There's Killer B with a 20 spot. Thank you. Thank you, Killer B. I appreciate that, man. Billy's a good man, too. Right there was one jumping right out there in front of us, right there in front of our baits. He, he's, he's flipping me off right there. Dang old carp. I'm a terrible carp fisherman, y'all. We've had a ton of carp here jumping up, and I can't catch but two of them. I hope they got a bunch of shad on that throw so they don't come further back in here. I got to get out of here in a minute anyway, but they'll, they'll have all these fish spooked. Killer beast is buy some hooks or something, partner. I'll do it, man. I appreciate it. Dane Andrews says, if I go back, the mouse is there. I better take reinforcements. Man, them state troopers ain't going to let me get there. They're going to have me pulled over on the way home tonight. After all the ranting I've done about them. They're going to get stuck back here in a minute. These fellas here, we may stick around a minute, see if these guys get stuck. they gonna run back here and mess up our fishing. I wouldn't mind to see them get stuck. There's about 38 people on a boat built for three. He's about to run over his net now. See if he gets anything right here. The other fellow that come in before I started the live stream made one throw, had a whole net full. Hmm. William Moore said, you must not have ever been in Las Vegas in the last two years, Matt, we've had a lot of cops. Oh, yeah. I ain't been to Vegas in a few years. I need to get back out there. I'd like to go, but any other pandemic hit and all that. And I always have a good time out there. I don't do nothing expensive. Girlfriend always likes to go to one of them Cirque du Soleil shows. I get stuck going to that, but I just like walking around doing the free stuff the Bellagio and that uh, volcano show at uh, Mirage. And I went out there and seen Pete Rose one time at, uh, at the Luxor, got his autograph, got to sit down and talk with him. That was a cool experience. I right, we'll see you later, Noah. Tiffany says them getting stuck, would be, it would be, wouldn't it? I was kind of hoping to see it. The good thing about fishing where we are, they can't, they can't get back in here to where we're at without getting stuck. Let's see what he got. Yeah, I think he got a few then. JT, the God said, how busy was your hospital during the last couple of years? I I left during the pandemic to do this YouTube full time, so I ain't really had to mess with it. It was getting bad there before I left. You know, it was just wait times and lack of supplies and all that, but I've thankfully been able to miss most of it by doing the whole YouTube thing. What time is y'all? Is it seven? Oh Lord, it's past seven thirty, ain't it? Seven fifty. 
all of Texas believe me, but I'm in the belief that 95% of the public support us, even though they may not like us. Oh yeah, I think that's true. I certainly back the blue. I just get pissed off at the troopers. But yeah, I think that's right. I think most people, all them defund the police people, they're stupid. They'll want to defund them until they need them for something. Robert Bailey, I need to, I need to go ahead and get on out of here is what I need to do. I was going to stay till 7.30, now it's 7.50. JT the God says, well, you left. Yeah, I was travel nursing from 2011 up until I quit. Well, I just do YouTube now. This YouTube channel finally got big enough where I could sustain myself. I don't know how long it lasts, but I'm gonna ride it till it dies. Yeah, Lynn says I best get home there. I think that's a good idea. What do you, what do you think, y'all? Let me turn the... What do you think? Well, I think we should wrap it up. We probably should. Them fellas there, they heading out. They must have got them enough uh, shad to not go catch a catfish tonight. That is one nice thing about war I've set up here. You get back this far in the creek, the boats can't get back here. They'll be running up on the in the mud. But yeah, y'all, for those of you that have stuck around, God help the people that watch this live stream after the fact. But, uh, you know, I had high hopes when I hooked them three carp. I, I, before I went live, I hooked three, landed one, and then we got bit right away after going live. And then we've had two hours of nothing before I moved over here to this bank, and then we got that one more. So two carp here, and what is that? over three hours, three and a half hours, wow. We've been live a long time. It ain't no wonder I've talked about bidets so much with this much time to kill, with no fishing action going on. But if you've stuck it out this long, thanks. Everybody who super chatted me, thanks. Uh, Matt Holacek, thanks for being a good sport on my rant about the state troopers. Didn't know you were one, I thought you was a regular cop. Didn't know you as a trooper before I went on my rant. But uh, nevertheless, thank you to everybody. I was wishing we'd get some more fish, but hopefully we'll do some more of this. I'm gonna be doing some more carp fishing. Hopefully it'll get better as we get on into spring, or maybe I'll just get better learning what I'm doing, either way. But uh, nevertheless, I had a good time on the carp that I caught. They're fun. Let me just make sure I didn't miss any more, uh, any more comments here. Yeah, I missed a few. Yeah, Lynn says she loves watching, but it's getting dark. It is getting dark. I still ain't fixed my light yet either. I gotta work on that. It's on my to-do list. Even uh, Tiffany said, even my mom already said goodnight. <laughs> well, all right, y'all. Well, I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, we'll do it again here soon. Uh, I've got some regular videos scheduled. Uh, the first one will come out tomorrow and we'll go live again at some point. Um, you know, the plan was to go live tomorrow with my buddy Mark from Deuces Wild Fishing, so maybe if he gets free sometime later on this week, I may go live with him. Otherwise, we'll, we'll figure it out again here soon. All right, y'all. I am turning it off. Y'all have a good night. Be safe. Thanks for tuning in.